The Radar Art Show is sponsored by Harrow Artist. Log on to HarrowGeorge.com. Harrow Artist features notable of the amazing comments, drawing videos, covers, and more. Make sure you subscribe to Harrow's YouTube channel called The Harrow Network, where you will get drawing video updates from Harold himself. Check out Harold's social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, at Harrow Artist, of course. Log on to HaroldGeorge.com. From the Radar Show, and welcome to number six of Radar Show. Also, the special edition of Halloween special. You can either trick or treat on me, whatever you want, or even like. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but yeah, well, welcome to number six, Radar Nation. Uh, it's October, uh, Breast Cancer Day, something special as well, uh, which goes for the Halloween. So, uh, any natural, it's like every year of the Halloween. So, that's my favorite. And so, uh, yeah, like and subscribe below. Uh, you can contact me. Uh, give me a number at 209-809-0195. You can leave me a voicemail, and I'll share it to my next episode to give you a shout-out. So, uh, yeah, and uh, today we're going to be talking about some of the amazing, this episode right here, um, you know, for this year. And it, it's going to be like something for Halloween, uh, Al Davis's, uh 10th anniversary, death anniversary for his death. Um Raider reports and uh, maybe Raider means and also uh, Raider conversation, which I'll be talking about that. Uh, two of the amazing legendary Oakland fan legends I uh, will be talking about later on. So uh, yeah, so uh, for this news, um, the Halloween, yes, yeah, coming up on the uh, thirty-one or thirty of the day of October. So uh, to give you some of the rants for the uh, this news and. Uh, Halloween is something that, you know, it's like being like a hollow, you know, it's more of like something like tradition, what the holiday does for like every, you know, the late, you know, for the, um, a year, so, uh, you know, October is, um, you know, kids were, you know, walking around in the streets, you know, going trick-or-treating with their costumes and, uh, uh, traditionally, and, uh, some of the adults don't, you know, like, they gave up for Halloween for some of the reasons, and, um, you know, like, maybe they will go to, like, Halloween parties for a, gr a, a good one, so, um, yeah, you just never even give up, you know, just to trick-or-treat and stuff, but, you know, I, I stopped trick-or-treating, you know, getting older, but, uh, it, it, it never even got stopped, you know, when I eat candies, or, like, when I even feel like, since I was a kid, so, um, yeah, some of my candies, or, like, my favorites are, Skittles, um, Sour Patch Kids, Lollipop, I would, I, I would even say about that, and, um, uh, yeah, and, um, I would go for gummy worms, so, uh, these are some of my candies, and also, uh, Lemon Heads, I like those as well, you know, these tradition Halloweens, this stuff that, and, you know, my favorite candies is, um, something I, I, I always enjoy, you know, eating them, you know, not a lot, but, you know, I just, I would even get like diabetes and stuff, but um, you know, I just I stayed at home for some of the reasons, you know, like I whenever you know ever since I stopped trick or treating, um, and uh, it's just like I just I couldn't even do this kind of stuff anymore. So um, yeah, because like I I would even watch movies about Halloween, and uh, one of my favorites are uh, Monster House, um, 
Nightmare Before Christmas, which that that's both, you know, Christmas and Halloween. Um, Course Bribe, and um, that's pretty much it. Yeah, there they are a couple movies that I like, and uh, that's that's one of my favorite. You know, every year I watch, uh, just for me personally, and uh, maybe yeah, because I I even watch them like around like evenings or night. Uh, be, me being on my own, and, uh, you know, that's, um, that's what I do, and, uh, so, yeah, I mean, like, you know, kids still continue to go, you know, trigger training, you know, every year, even though, like, the pandemic is trying to stop this, but it won't, it won't, I hope the, the kids will go into, uh, social distancing, and, uh, like, you know, like, distance away from the house, you know, like, not to throw eggs in the house, like, usually, uh, illegal stuff, but, uh, it's, it's, um, uh, Maybe, like, casual or anything in certain ways to, you know, kids need to understand about this, uh, stuff, so, um, so, uh, yep, yeah, it's just, uh, the tradition, so, um, so, in other news, we are celebrating, of course, Breast Cancer Day, uh, you know, NFL does something special for breast cancer every October, every year, uh, in the early days to celebrate women's, uh, to try to battle the cancer from their breasts. So, um, yeah, so what's, what's special is that I didn't understand how this, uh, breast cancer is about, uh, when it comes to, uh, women's in general, that they have some, some of the problems with their breasts and they cannot hold it. You know, they, they can't stand for the, uh, the cancers in some other ways, not offensively, but, uh, something important for what they needed to, you know, take care of. And, um, and usually it goes for the pink, you know, I, I don't have any problems with pink, such as, you know, it's maybe a little sexist, but I'm not, I'm not all about that, but never argue, but it's some, you know, pink is something general for, you know, like for the breast cancer day, and, uh, that's what the NFL does nowadays for, like, celebrating, uh, every year, they put out a pink, you know, ribbon, uh, for the breast cancer to, uh, celebrate women that are trying to battle, uh, what they do to try to defeat the cancer that much as possible, especially us as a Raiders, you know, every, you know, some of my friends, uh, Raider fans, they, you know, wearing pinks and stuff, or even makeup, and, uh, just to celebrate that tradition of the cancer, um, to send some of the power stuff for the, uh, the bre uh, breasts, and, um, it's, um, it's, 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 it's natural, it's natural for that, you know, even the babies, the, they were born, you know, they just, you know, give out of the milks from some of the mothers and stuff, you know, uh, regularly, uh, when they were born, so, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's natural, it's natural, and so, uh, I never get disrespect for these kind of a stuff and situation about women's when it comes to these, uh, with their breast cancer, so, it's, uh, you know, you just gotta, you gotta, you gotta stand up for yourself, you know, like, um, you know, like, women's deserve rights for these, uh, these kind of a rights to, you know, save the power of these breast cancers, and maybe the, some of the stuff, like, it's, it's, you can't be more, like, dangerous, like, you know, if you do stuff like any disease, and, uh, maybe, like, more, uh, how you even describe it, you know, like, um, lumps, and, um, you just, you just never know about, like, what's gonna happen, so, um, yeah, so that's what, that's what I'm just gonna talk about in, in certain ways, so, so, in other news, a nearly couple in Santee, California, who brought their first home together five months ago, uh, operately lost that home Monday when the small plane crashed into their neighborhoods, killing at least two people and destroying the two houses in fairly seen that one witness described as a war zone. Uh, nearly wets, Cody and Courtney were at the uh, work at the time of the daily plane crash and told the NBC7 they were beyond grateful that it was in case. Uh, Cody said that his mother-in-law had visited their home about two hours before the plane crash and had picked up their 15-year-old dog, Mister, he said. This was pure luck. A couple home, the Greencastle Street in Santee near uh, Santana High School was one of the two homes that burst into flames the horrifying events on Monday. Cody uh, told NBC7 he, he and his wife brought the home about five months ago, closing on the property just a few days after their wedding in May. The couple who has been together for 10 years uh, posted a photo of a social media after buying their home um, on May 7, 2021 in photo 
Courtney and his Cody's back, happily holding the keys in their 10 single story home and front yard in the background. They are both smiling from the ear to ear at first time a home buyer should. So what, yeah, wow, and my thoughts about that, uh, it's not like the 9-11 like that way, but, you know, seriously, it's some of the, where the home, uh, in the San Diego, uh, country right there, I mean, these two couples, they were shocked, they were shocked in that situation, like, they were losing that home, you know, they were, they were not even, they, they were not even there, they were somewhere else, um, but luckily, you know, they, they survived. They kind of understand what the situation when the plane, they did not know is that the plane were crashing into their homes, their new homes. So, um, yeah, it was quite a shock for me because, uh, that, that I, I've never seen something like that, you know, before because, um, there's this a lady inside they're trying to she tried to get out and some of the fires are trying to help her out and there were some like dogs in the backyard uh tried to save them in certain ways and, the, and that that's that's that is crazy and shocked situation right there and so um yeah there are a couple of few people that you know got uh they were they got killed in the plane crash so uh sending uh sending condolences to some of the families or friends they do know and so uh that that's pretty sad you know in that place area it's all it kind of looks like a war war zone like like they said so uh yeah i i don't know what to say about this this sort of things and um the plane just plane do happen sometimes even like uh kobe bryant the uh nba player legendary player uh last year he got a plane crash which that's sad and his daughter uh genie uh which i you, you know me personally i've never been a big fan of the uh basketball stuff other than you know i'm a big fan of uh baseball and uh, especially football too as well and um yeah we just we just never know what the plane's going to be coming up with you know like to be honest with you you know they need to know their safety zone for like the passengers uh whatever the weather is you know it, like maybe it gets foggy and stuff like it may be raining or thunder it's just you just never you just never know what's going to happen you know like it's just there, there's got to be a safety way for the uh these passengers to you know watch out for themselves and um yeah and so again my condolences uh goes out to their families and uh some of the people that they uh friends they know and uh it's very sad you know in santi uh california um the new home and uh for, as for the couples um they were good. They were good, and uh, they don't know what to do. And uh, hopefully, they'll fi uh, figure something out soon, or maybe one day they might find a new place to, uh, to uh, live. And uh, we just never, we never know what's going to happen for them. So, so yeah, that's pretty much it. So uh, we'll be right back after this messages. Um, we'll be talking some more about the Raider stuff as well for all of you Raider Nation out there. The Raider Art Show is sponsored by Stoner Dudes Art. Log on to stonerdoarts.com. Stoner Do Arts features notable of the amazing cartoon comics, t-shirts, books, and so on. Make sure you hit up Michael Masonet, aka Stoner Dude, on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And check out his amazing tribute band of the Raiders called Raiderhead. Log on to stonerdoarts.com. Alright, and welcome back to the Radar Art Show, Halloween tradition. I mean, edition, so uh, sorry about that. Anyways, let's go and move on to the Radar News right here. Um, unfortunately, Monday, October 4th, this past, um, the Raiders were at the uh, Los, uh, Los Angeles Chargers, which I wouldn't even say San Diego, but uh, anyways, uh, they have lost over 14-28, to 28, which that's pretty sad. And um, like, you know, uh, Derek Carr... Uh, his yard is uh, 196, and um, uh, TD is two, and um, you know he's he's trying hard, you know, like to you know throw the ball better, like I said uh, a couple episodes. So um, you know, like he was, you know, like as a quarterback, yeah, I mean he can throw better, but not really. But he's almost close to like throwing it to uh, Henry Ruggs or um, any any wide receivers, running backs, or. It, you know, he, he should have changed this a uh, couple plays in certain ways. And, um, yeah, I mean, like, people are just hating on him in some in some of the ways still. But um, for me, I don't have any opinion what, you know, Derek Carr is going through. And, um, you know, like, um, 
I wouldn't say like he is the biggest MVP player in certain ways, but I like not not yet, and uh, I can't answer those kind of a que uh, question right there. But um, yeah, we'll have to see what's going what's going on with him uh, as a uh, quarterback. You know, Derek Carr. You know, uh, I don't I don't know even what to say about him, but um, you know, as a uh, uh, Joshua Jacob, uh, number twenty eight uh, yards is a uh, forty. Um, Henry Ruggs, uh, his is, uh, 60s, uh, Darren Waller, uh, 50s, and, um, yeah, and, uh, Brian Edwards is, uh, fortunately four, so, uh, yeah, it's, it, it's hard sometimes, you know, the, uh, the offense are not really confident that enough for that, those kind of a plays, and, uh, you know, like I said, Derek, uh, Derek Carr shouldn't even change those kind of a plays in, in that way, and, um, as for the defense, uh, for me, I go for Max Crosby, uh, like I mentioned before, and uh, Max Crosby is doing hard. You know, he uh, tackles some of the quarterbacks and uh, try to get through there, but you know, it's not enough. And uh, I, I, I would choose to go for him. What he would, what he would do for uh, this year, a long way to go uh, when we play the uh, Denver Broncos um, in Denver. So um, yeah, I mean that that's my thoughts about him and uh for the defense like i said you know i i will be more focused on defense of what what they're going to do if they're not trash enough like the fans would do to them and uh just don't please don't blame for like the defense uh players um we're trying hard enough for that and uh in those plays so uh as for the uh chicago bears uh at the las vegas raiders in the legion stadium Again, once again, they lost uh, from 20 to 9 to 9. Um, yeah, and um, pretty, it's hard. You know, it's hard. You know, it's uh, just like the uh, the Chargers. It's just uh, one of the, the biggest players in their teams are just really good at what they do as they uh, the wide receivers just run good. Um, it's not even like the same since like the 2002 uh, when the Raiders were greatest like they win the a uh, afc championship and uh, almost winning to the super bowl around 2003 which unfortunately they didn't and um you know it's 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 not like the same as it used to be and uh the fans were keep you know getting upset in those kind of a situations and uh and uh again you know fans are just blaming car blaming car for whatever reasons and um you know he they think that he's not the greatest quarterback. You know, he said he's not trying to look for fame or, you know, get attention. You know, he just just making a living as a, uh, a football player, a quarterback, and he doesn't have a family. And so uh, it really makes sense for what he's going to be doing. So uh, they would say uh, this may be his last year, the season. He might get out of the uh, re uh, resign for the uh, as a quarterback. We'll, we'll have to see. We're not sure about him, but um and also bring up to this other news um uh this is pretty sad for you know all of us you know one of our head coach of this year uh legendary john gruden uh recently he got resigned from the raiders due to the um the emails that that were received around like the 10 years ago 2011 uh through the uh nfl or something and uh making some kind of like a, a racial slur to the uh, Roger Goodell or some of the uh, anchors that, you know, being an offensive, which makes sense, but uh, not to get, you know, political with that. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, John Gruen, like I, I thought he was great for whatever reasons, but um, besides being in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers uh, winning the Super Bowl, but, um, and then, you know, I mean, John, you know, he always does for like the anchors before, uh, never even coached for many years, and uh, when he started coming back in 2018, I mean, John was uh, was wanting to do something and still love for the Raiders in many in many ways. But um, yeah, I mean, pretty sad. I mean, like the, all the fans, like little Chucky, uh, Chucky Gruden, one of our favorite, and uh, pretty upset about this situation. And um, but he'll still be a fan. But uh, you know, as for John, I mean, like. I don't know what's next for John, like, you know, he's been, you know, ever since he got resigned for the Raiders, um, uh, see what's going on next, you know, probably he has a family, uh, something he needed to do in his life personally, um, yeah, I just, I wish him the best of luck with what he does, and, um, 
you know, we'll have to see what, you know, we're worrying what's next for the uh, new head coach for the Raiders uh, this year. Maybe next year, we help, we'll find some, like, the greatest head coach of all time and other, like, NFL teams from the other NFL team in certain ways. And, you know, and they even said, like, that NFL owns the Raider for whatever reasons. Like, they can just choose wherever the hell they want for, like, in some ways, like, the for the head coach and, um, uh, if they uh, they didn't even care for the fans it's just to choose or vote any like coaches they can pick it's gonna be a problem you know and uh, you know like I, I don't think they should own the Raiders in certain ways because like we give out the votes to choose what coach we want for our team and um, yeah it's really sad like it's, it's like not the same as it used to be and uh, you know, it feels like the it feels like the NFL just the uh, company doesn't care for fans in any ways. Like they are more passionate about like with the costume and things. And uh, for me, I, I feel the same way. And so, um, yeah. And uh, you know, it's it's we're trying hard. You know, they they try to fight for it for the rights in the certain ways to uh, Raider fans in like any ways to. Uh, be uh, confident enough to be not just to say like a super fan, you know what my boss says, but you know like a more positive way, like being a raider, you know. That's my opinion for what whatever reasons for that. So uh, again, I wish uh, John Gruden the uh, best of luck what he does. Maybe he'll be in the Hall of Fame in some some other ways. So in the future, maybe. So for this other news, uh, we are celebrating one of the legendary person, a man that does everything for the Raiders uh King Al Davis I mean he does a lot for the Raiders in certain ways I mean with the ever since the 60s um he was gone into the amazing thing doing amazing thing for the diversity hiring our shell um hiring a woman like Amy Trask and all that you know it's it's um what what he what he was doing as a uh, coach any coaches that he positioned in and um uh, this year is the uh, 10th death anniversary of his death, and uh, we were all sad about that, you know, because um, I, I never even know who Al Davis was when I was a kid, um, because that my mom actually took me to the, uh, like, in the middle of the Coliseum in Oakland. Uh, he was giving a little speech, you know, all, all the securities were, you know, around him, like, not to, you know, have people get through to him, and um, but he gives a, a credible speech about the commitment to excellence and um, the thing about the pride and poise and uh, the things he have done for many years as for the Raiders and uh, and he makes a lot of a lot of choices you know choices that he didn't really get recognized when he started when the team started moving to L.A. around the early 80s and um, you know them winning a Super Bowl at that time and. Um, well, actually, in Oakland, they won a Super Bowl around the 70s. But uh, in those histories, um, it, you know, he uh, makes a lot of choices for, like, the businesses and when it comes to NFL, uh, defending the uh, identity of the uh, incredible uh, atmosphere for what, like, he does for this community of the Raiders. And uh, so when the team came back to uh, Oakland in 95, uh he does really care for the Raider Nation, and uh, especially all the uh, people around uh, for him at most part, and uh, see what happens like to, you know, like, you know, he constantly tries to do everything that he can, and so, um, yeah, it was pretty sad, like, 10 years ago that he just passed, you know, with the cancer and stuff, you know, he was around, like, almost like, you know, early 80s in his age, so I, that is, that is insane like um like um because 10 years ago we were at the uh, ricky sports theater and grill uh just to honor al and uh, we were watching the raiders they were defeating uh texas uh over there and uh, they won apparently uh hugh jackson i mean i don't know what i don't know who he is that coach but uh yeah he he really got an emotional in that way and uh we were all shocked you know like we we were excited we won the game like the the trivia for al davis and uh and after that, in the night, in the evening, we went over to the headquarters to see the players return. Um, it was an it was incredible experience, you know. We have all the people, you know, my friends and stuff, were attending there uh, to give, you know, their opinion, thoughts with the late Gray Al Davis, uh, what the share passion about, like they we they he changed our lives forever, and uh, and the torch and ever since then the torch lit up 
almost like around the Coliseum and even at the Legion Stadium, this big torch like not not really a not really like a torch like the fire but it's like you know lighting lighting one but uh i'm not really sure about that but yeah the torch will lit up like to burn brightest in the raider organization and the will to win that's what he said on the quote and uh you know any guesses like some of the legendary players and some celebrities uh some people they they give a tribute and, and to honor you know al davis with the torch lighting the torch you know after the uh national anthem and uh yeah it always keeps on forever for all of us you know uh around october we we celebrate his death and uh, we also celebrate his birthday around the uh, 4th of july which that's my brother's birthday but yeah and uh yeah we we always keep the tradition alive you know keep the shield with the a l l on there on the uh, helmet in the back and even like you know patches on the jersey and stuff you know keep that leg uh legend uh legendary man alive because that's what we do for al davis that's what we do for the commitment to excellence what he does so uh, that's my opinion for what you know, like what my story stuff for my uh, uh, things about Al Davis. I never met him before because um, we went to his house before, like in uh, in the hills in Oakland, and um, yeah, and uh, you know, I I I was around at the time, you know, being small. I don't know what you know timeline it was, but uh, yeah. So you know, that's my opinion. All right, to the uh, other news, we have Raider reports featuring Raider Puppet. Well, unfortunately, we don't have Oakland Raider Savage uh, videos to report, but uh, we do have um, David Michaels Raider Puppet reports from the Elysian Stadium recently uh, when they were playing against the uh, Chicago Bears recently. So uh, let's go ahead and let's get into the report what he was doing over at the J Law and, uh, you know, see what's up there. He does look like him. Get on your, get on your, get on. What's up? Okay, you ready? Getting in? Getting yeah. in? Alright. See you guys later. Peace oh, out. Peace out. Oh, I love it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a puppet. What about it? <laughs> hey. Look at all the Chicago fans. Look at all the puppets. Uh, Raiders. There's Raider Rock right there. It's Raider Puppet. What's up? Oh, there's my buddy. There's my buddy. There's my friend. Raider Rock! Raider Rock! What's up, brother? How you doing, my man? I'm just lazy getting on the bike this time. Yes. Oh, there's Captain Jack right there. Captain Jack! Raider Pump in the house! Raider puppet rolls. Take the fast track. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Puppets first. Puppets first. All right. Shout outs to Raider puppet David Michaels, man. Yeah, he, he like he said, he's on a roll right now, rolling in around the Legion Stadium. Man, and also shout outs to Raider Rock as well. You know, I met him over at the uh, first met him over at the uh, summer kickoff over at the Bakersfield recently, and uh, great connection with him a little bit. And also shout outs to uh, Captain Jack uh, Raider. Uh, go subscribe to his channel, YouTube as well, just to type it in. Uh, he does have a great podcast, and uh, yeah, make sure you check him out. He's been doing a lot of great content for the Raiders as well. So yeah, shout outs to David Micus for uh, Raider Pup for this report. Moving on, uh, Raider memes. Four memes, the new ones. Now, it's not like the same one. Don't, trust me, trust me, it's not the same. It's the new ones, but it's like some of the old ones in certain ways. So let's go ahead and check this out. Um, this way, uh, right here, this meme that says, You mean there are still Raiders fans out there? Okay, so this is some old person right there, the woman, you know, looking at the computer, uh, you know, over at the, uh, you know, some apartment or something I, I'm, I'm not sure you know i'm not sure what she's looking at all right the other one uh it says raiders game you mean ballerina show with other man <laughs> okay that's keanu reeve the actor 
yeah, and um, you know, I I've seen him over, you know, the movies like My Own Private Idaho, and uh, yeah, I mean, he he's a great actor. I mean, I I never looked up to his movies before, but uh, yeah. Um, the other one it says Raiders said they're going to the playoffs. Wow, the Chargers. Wow, they thought that you know the Raiders are going to the playoffs. Wow. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe we will go to the playoffs after this season. You know, we'll never know, like I said. And for the final one right here to this meme, it says, Jets fans be like, we beat the Raiders. We're winning the Super Bowl. Oh, man, man, shout outs to Senior Raider right here. That's our guy right here, man. <laughs> that that That's hilarious. That's hilarious right there, you know, taking the pictures of him over at the Oakland Coliseum. Wow, that's hilarious, man. Yeah, so um, that's all for the memes, you know, four memes. Now we're getting into the final one segments is Raider Conversation. Our guest, special guest, one of our friend of all time from Oakland days, uh, the founder of the Raider Nation is Raider Rob. Now, people have don't know who Raider Rob is. He was have done for the Raiders for a long time since the the first generation of the Raiders uh, in the in the somewhere in the mid uh, 70s. So uh, let's go ahead and get into the call of Raider Rob and see what's going up. Uh, what's up over there? Raider Nation, here he is, Raider Rob, the founder of the Raider Nation and one of the original members of the Black Hole. Welcome, Rob. Thank you for having me, Raider Rob, and congratulations on your show, man. This is great that you're doing this. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, now, I know you have done a lot for the Raiders for many years in Oakland. Uh, you are a native of the uh, Oakland, right? Yes, I'm born uh, in Oakland, native of Oakland, grew up there. Uh, I haven't lived other places throughout my life, but yeah, I'm I'm hella Oakland, as they say. <laughs> all right, yeah, that that that's great. Now, uh, before we get into all those, let's find out what how your story of how you became a Raider fan. Wow. Well, I became a Raider fan uh, mid seventies, growing up in Oakland. Um, that was all there was, uh, really, other than the athletics. When it came to sports, the Warriors weren't that good, but Oakland and the Raiders were just um, one and the same, so to speak. The city and the team had the same type of energy and same type of image. The image of the Raiders were very much the image of Oakland, and so um, it was natural. You know, family members introduced me to football, uncles and what have you, cousins, and uh, that was it. It was just the Raiders, you know, on the Sunday during football season, that's what you did. You get prepared to watch the Raiders play football. And so I like to tell people I was born into it with a silver and black spoon. I was born into the into the Raider culture. Oh, definitely. It is a family. Like, that's what we do as a family, as a Raider Nation. Um, now, what? Oh. No, I was just agreeing with you. Oh, okay. Uh, so who are some of your favorite legendary players or current ones today? Oh yeah. You know, 
Yeah, mine is uh, Marshawn Lynch. Um, I think, yeah, Max Crosby, I would go for him. And um, Josh Jacob, yeah, I'll, I'll go for him as well. The running back, yeah, yeah, he's promising too, very promising, yes. Reminds me of Clarence Davis, another great Raider from back in the 70s. <laughs> yeah, and so, uh, anyways, uh, now what was your reaction, like, when you were a teen, like, the Raiders announced moving to Los Angeles and losing them from Oakland? Well, um, I was young at that time, about 13 years old, and uh, the one thing that hurt is uh, when you're young like that, you dream about the future, at least our generation did, and you think about when you get older and you have kids and your life when you get older, and so I was really, you know, happy as I was growing up as a teenager, but getting ready to, to think that when I got in my 20s and got older and became an adult, one of the things I wanted to do, and matter of fact, I was going to ask my mother when I got to graduation, if the Raiders were still in Oakland in high school for my graduation present to be season tickets to the Raiders. That's what I wanted. I thought I would live seeing the Raiders as I grew up in my 20s and what have you. Um, So I was hurt. You know, I cried. (laughs) You know, I cried for about a week, man. We were all upset. My cousins and everybody in my neighborhood, the whole city, uh, it hurt a lot. You know, we were looking forward to seeing Marcus Allen. He was the new draft pick coming out of USC. We thought he'd be an Oakland Raider. Howie Long. You know, and just all that promise of, uh, you know, the future after having won the Super Bowl in 1980, uh, we thought, you know, hey, we're on our way. Oakland Raiders are going to be a dynasty. And then they ended up moving to Los Angeles. And, uh, you know, what I never said L.A. The old saying that we had back then, never say L.A., never said L.A. But I understood as I got older that it was business. You know, it was business. And uh, the city of Oakland dropped the ball with keeping the Raiders there. You know, and politics is a dirty game, man. That's what I found out too. Yeah, for me, I'm just gonna even say Raiders. I know, I know, it kind of hurts a lot when they uh, went to L, uh, Las Vegas. We'll talk about that later. Uh, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna say Raiders, no matter what. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, they are the Raiders. It's a synonymous name. Everybody knows it around the world. And uh, so, yeah, no matter where they are, they are the Raiders. You're right about that, Art. Oh yeah, and now. Um, how, how do you feel when you uh, the Raiders returned to 1995, you being original of the Black Hole, and with the relationship with J.G. the Brick? Um, I was happy. You know, we were all happy. Uh, the year before, in 94, as I write in my book that will be coming out sometime later this year or next year, uh, there were meetings in these, um, these council meetings downtown and these different open public seminars and meetings that they were having at the Oakland Auditorium, Laney College, and all that, the year before, 1994. And I went to a number of those and spoke, you know, when they had the public speaking and the fans and people could speak. And really, a lot of people didn't want the Raiders to come back. You know, Oakland, again, was in an influx of its civic identity and infrastructure and politics, again, playing a role that the city needed to upgrade the schools, upgrade the street, upgrade, you know, the tamp down crime, all of that. And, of course, people were against the Raiders coming because of the money at the time, $33 million, which was a lot of money in 1995, to give them a comeback. And then people were against the Coliseum being altered. There was plans to put Mount Davis, as we know, which ended up getting built. So it was bittersweet both ways. It was great they were coming back, but being somebody that cares about my city, too, I could understand that argument. But we were happy. You know, we were happy. I was on the radio uh, the next year, 96. I began being a, a featured caller on the JT The Brick Show. And, um, you know, it was really expounding how the Raiders, you know, were going to come back to Oakland and be a great team and what have you. And, uh, you know, they came back and we were excited. That first year, first couple years were really just uh, just kind of like getting a dream come true again that we thought, like I said earlier, I wasn't going to have because they had moved. And now they were back and I was going to end up being able to see my Raiders, you know. So it was great, Art. It was. It was. But like I said, it it, it had its conflictions, you know. Oh yeah, confliction is a big deal. So, uh, so, anyways, um, what is the word Raider Nation means to you when they came back to Oakland? Well, you know, I um, was very impressed. A lot of Raider fans were of the identity that they had taken on in Los Angeles. And no offense to Los Angeles, it's not anything that really has to do directly with Los Angeles fans, Raider fans, Los Angeles football fans, or Los Angelinos in general, but at the time, gangster rap was rising up. You had a group, NWA, that associated their image with wearing 
Amazing history right there. Amazing history with the Oakland days. And even today, it's it's like homeless people out there. Like, you know, the cars are just running around the street, like with the mark on there, you know, black mark. It's just like really crazy nowadays. Yeah, the Oakland, uh, the city of Oakland has, you know, failed to really evolve itself and get back to a place that it had in the 80s and early 90s where it was a fully functional city and, um, you know, wasn't so much political tension. And now you just have a city that seems to be on the verge of anarchy. But yeah, you know, it, it was uh, it was beautiful. You know, all those years when the Raiders came back, they kind of put the glue back together with a civic pride, you know, for all those years. And uh, you saw groups, you know, like the Black Hole and whatever, like I know you're going to talk about, emerge. And those identities were reflective of the identity of Oakland. And so it kind of restored, um, you know, that Oakland identity as well as that Raider fan identity again. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, speaking with the Black Hole, what was your relationship with the late, great uh, Black Hole Rob Rivera? Oh, my God. Um, yeah, our condolences uh, continue to go out to the Rivera family for the loss of Rob uh, last Monday. Um, Rob was a great friend, um, someone who invited me to join the Black Hole. I met Rob in 1996 in the Black Hole. I was at a Raiders-Colts game. We were 6-0 and at the time, or 7-0, and and, uh, we were up on the second deck, me and my cousin Fly, and I happened to see the group of guys in the end zone, south end zone, uh, behind the goalposts, just putting on a act. I mean, they were just so animated, and so into the game and they stood out from all the rest of the people there had to be 40,000 at the game uh, that year, uh, that particular game and everybody was well into the atmosphere that we would come known for, it was rocking and rolling and loud and all, but they stood out for some reason they just stood out anyway, made my way down, met them, met Rob, met Dave John Martinez, Harry Krause uh, a few of the other fellas uh, you know, Maldo, some of these black hole legends as fans and um, he invited me to, uh, you know, join them next year. He, you know, they knew I was from the radio and heard my voice on the radio talking about the Raider Nation and, you know, this and that and the other. And so uh, they invited me to come down and join them uh, the next year. And that's what I did. Came out to one of the preseason tailgates that next year in 97. And, you know, Rob made me an official member. And throughout many years, I was the uh, spokesman uh, for the Black Hole officially, you know. So, uh Love Rob, man. Love him. I will miss him dearly. He was a good friend. We shared a lot of great times, talked a lot of football, a lot of business. But more importantly, Rob really wanted the Black Hole to be a universal fan group that, uh, again, uh, represented the Raiders in a way that was respectful, but also in a way that showed that, you know, there were no fan base like us. You know, there was nothing like us in in professional sports. And in a lot of ways, there was nothing like the Black Hole, and there never will be. Well, yeah, I mean, like, the Black Hole, to me, I kind of, like, compares it to, like, Comic-Con when it comes to tailgates, like, even, even at the... Wow, bu- that's a good one, Art. Wow, Comic-Con, yeah, yeah. <laughs> With fans, all the costume and stuff, like, that, that's traditional, right. like, that, based on that. Right, and you grew up in it, too, you know? You grew up in it, you come along in the mid-2000s, and we're growing strong, and so, 
you know, I'm so proud of you. You got a chance to grow up in it, and you really understood it. You became a citizen of the Raider Nation who is now doing his own thing, and it just goes to show that Amy Trask and a lot of them were wrong that we were a bad influence on kids. Look at you. <laughs> we were a bad influence on kids. We were a great influence on kids. Look at you. Well, hey, I... Go. I, I, that's why I'm inspired. Of. I was inspired from the beginning with all the costume, you know, people that I, you know, introduced, my mom introduced me to them. It's just a right. tri- ama- amazing thing for me as a history for myself. Yes, and, and, and a lot of thanks and shout out goes out to your mom, Candy Padilla, and your daddy, Anthony. You know, uh, they both just raised you Raider as we preach in the Raider Nation. And you came out a true Raider, sir. You are a true Raider. <laughs> oh yeah, and, and speaking of that, and uh, with the the internet that started in the early two thousands about your show called Raider Fan Radio, well, not the Murph one, but you, the original. And so, uh, what? Give us the story of how this uh, Raider Fan Radio started when you started this first internet in history. Yeah, uh, this goes back to Tim Del Rosario, um, who came along about nineteen ninety seven with a magazine concept called Raider Fan Magazine. Uh, At the time, I was also uh, looking to produce a local show because the Raiders didn't have a weekly show like they have now, like Silver and Black Report and Behind the Shield and all that. They didn't have a weekly show. So me and a famous caller named Raider Mort, who's a Hall of Fame Raider fan, Steve Mortor, were, you know, on the JT The Brick Show starting 1996, got popular from that, even though I was kind of known before then. Um, we got popular and what have you, and uh, Tim was a fan of uh, JT show, and he uh, subsequently uh, put this magazine together in the late 90s, and uh, it became a great success. It was a free paper that he would give out every couple of weeks around the parking lot and what have you. Uh, fast forward to 2002, um, I had done a show with Raider Moore called Raider Talk Raw in 1998 that was on local cable, and Oakland, and that helped get my identity up more and brought more up, but it also showed that we could do a concept of a show, and we produced it ourselves and paid for it and what have you. Anyway, Tim remembered that, and so at the same time that JT was blowing up on KMBR, they started bringing in other personalities, and Bob France, a uh, popular DJ, had a show, and Stoner Dude was on that show. He was a personality on that show, kind of the version of me, but for the Bob Fran show, and he'd probably light up his bong and, you know, make his weed references and all that, and Tim had this idea one day to get involved in this new internet thing that everybody was talking about. I had heard about it. I thought it was some bull crap, you know, information highway. I'm immediately believing being from East Oakland, that's going to be a government. They're going to run it. I don't want to be a part of that. You know, da 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 But uh, he convinced me, you know, that it was the wave of the future. It was going to be new media. Definitely, definitely. That internet, the history for the radio is pretty amazing. I mean, like, originally it was going to be, like, in the radio in the old-fashioned way, like in the 90s uh, with the uh, uh, cable box, you know, like, radio box to hear something, like, about sports and the Raiders. Exactly, exactly. We were, And then when Stone came along, he had ideas to do little bits, skits, um, and then we brought along the beautiful Black Hole staff. And her idea was to do a thing called Chaos Theory, which was going to be a feature every week that she did talking about social issues or civic issues or what have you that sometimes had a correlation with sports, but in general was just news. And then we thought, well, what are that entertainment? I was a 
you know, rapper and a, and a punk musician. Stone was a musician at the time. We still are. And we thought, okay, let's talk about entertainment, too. We both have an interest in entertainment and pop culture. And so that's why it became the world's number one internet sports entertainment radio talk show. And so um, when it comes to YouTube and all this, you know, you know, new technology and new platforms that they have, when we were on the internet, we had to upload the show onto a website that Tim had, and then we fed it out uh, in what they call streaming now. It was back then you just clicked on live, which is now what people are doing. And we were live every Tuesday night. And saying Tuesday, T-O-O-Z, was a (laughs) nod to John Matuzak. So um, anyway, we had all this, you know, different guests we would have on. We had a girl that had an affair with Daryl Russell, our late uh, defensive tackle. She came on and told us some stuff about him and, you know, things like that. Like I said, Steph had her feature chaos theory. So... Yeah, we were Ustream. We were on Ustream when that first came out. So uh, we were ahead of the game. You know, we pioneered what you now see on YouTube uh, in 2002. Oh, yeah. And that, you know, recently, I, I know you guys know about this. I created this uh, new Facebook page for the official Raider Fan Radio. Yes, you did. Yes, and- you did. Doing a great job. Thank you. Oh yeah, I I created myself. I mean, you guys are not the only one. I give a lot of credits uh, credits to you guys as well for my show, Raider Art Show. Thank you. God bless. Yes, we had a spinoff show uh, that was run by Chris Dobbins, started in two thousand and seven. That was a spinoff of our show. It was A's Fan Radio, and it's still alive now with uh, uh, Corporal Keith uh, from the Right Field Bleachers of the A's Fan Organization. He still runs it along with Boss Man. It's called A's Fan Radio. So. That was a spinoff to Raiders Fan Radio, um, and uh, yeah, you know we influenced a lot of people, and I'm, you know we we uh, we take our credit when it's due. We're glad we influence people, but you know we also live in truth, and we are the original. You know, before podcasting, there was Raider Fan Radio. You know, we were the precursor to what you have now as podcasting. So yeah, you know. Oh yeah, like yeah. Like David said, take what you want. So we got to take it. We got to take our credit because people are not giving it to us. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, speaking of that, you know, the A's might be potentially or not, you know, might be moving to the uh, Nevada, Southern Nevada of Las Vegas if they don't get the deal done in Oakland. Uh, what is your thoughts about this kind of a political stuff when it comes to that? Well, you know, I uh, uh, haven't dealt with it a lot of years on a lot of different, you know, situations when it came to the Raiders and the Black Hole having to play politics at the Coliseum. There were times when they tried to forces from the spot that we had for years uh we had to deal with the media this and that and the other you know uh the thing that has always been a threat even when i was a kid when it and when it came to oakland was that oakland fails to grasp its true identity it 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 spends too much time the politicals worried about san francisco and worried about an image that has already been fostered on oakland and instead of building something new off of the image that has already been established in the identity of Oakland and, and making it better, improving it, but being inclusive with all that is Oakland's image, and that means it's teams and what have you, uh, they drop the ball that way because they don't want to invest the money. Yet they do have the money, and people just have to be savvy enough to see that money is put other places. When it comes to redevelopment, when it comes to gentrification, you've got money for that. But you don't have money to continue to invest and really fortify your established brands, so to speak, that represent Oakland like the Raiders and the A's and the Warriors, okay? And from that, allow there to be a native trickle-down, to be a trickle-down to the natives, which then would give more of an influx because you know Oakland is a city that's built on pride. And so if you build a new stadium in Oakland, people will come. When you renovated the Coliseum Arena, the Warriors got popular. 2007 and again winning subsequent championships uh, in the late teens. And so it's been proven. The A's, the runs that they had, the 22-game win streak, where a movie was made from it, Moneyball. These are things that politicians don't capitalize when your city becomes a national identified place and a national identified interest point for, you know, a commodity and, and for business. And so Oakland has continuously dropped the ball for many government administrations there, mayoral administrations, and it's sad because the Mark Davises and uh, the ownership group with the Warriors and, you know, John Fisher, they get the blame. Well, they're business people, and people have to understand business, and when you have emotion, 
tied against business emotion versus business, the emotion of the citizens versus the politicals and the business people, then the business people can get the blame. They can take the blame. Uh, but yet the people don't see that there needs to be more of an interactive approach from the government to want to establish and continue to sustain these great images and these great identifying brands that you have that make money for the city. And so it comes down to, like I told you a few days ago when we talked, um, the city of Oakland's not in the sports business anymore. That's what it, it's what it boils down to. They're into making that city over, into now investing in a different identity for the city that they will come back and want to capitalize on down the line. And I hope somewhere there's a group that will get together and propose an expansion franchise for Oakland and the NFL, and I'm conflicted about the A's moving. I don't want the A's to move, but I see what the game is. They want to frustrate the fans. They made ticket hikes this year for next year for the fans, yet you're threatening to move. So what fan, real conscious fan, and they know Oakland fans are conscious, is going to invest in a product that may leave them? And then, therefore, the business people can say, oh, well, the fans didn't come. They didn't show up. Attendance is low. So we can move. And this is an old trick. And I'm just sorry that the citizens of Oakland have been used like this and also have fallen for this old trick instead of demanding that uh, their dollars and their fans should be respected and try to hold on to the team. And I suggest when it comes to the Oakland A's, the fans try to do something like the Cleveland Browns did in 95. Cleveland Browns fans, when the team that left and went to Baltimore, Get a coalition together, get a petition out, and try to keep the colors of the Oakland A's and keep the name uh, with Oakland. Because sports, professional sports will return to Oakland one day. They just want to get Oakland a certain way and have it look a certain way before they bring professional sports back. They want to wash away the old identity that you and I know and that we're associated with. They want to wash that away. So, you know, I hope that happens. The A's should still and always be Oakland. You know, and Las Vegas, if they do move here, uh, should just come up with a new team name. Uh, but they shouldn't be able to be the Las Vegas Athletics. That I don't want, and I don't like that. Oh, I get the point. Yeah, I get that feeling as well. So, uh, yeah, I, we'll have to see. Yeah, we'll have to see. You know, I hope that something can be done in the 11th hour. But again, you know, the politicians are the ones that are behind this deal, and it seems like the politics in Oakland favors non-professional sports. You know, at this time. And it's sad because that is a very lucrative market, very successful market. Uh, seven, eight, nine championships in the last 30 years between the Warriors, A's, and the Raiders uh, back in, uh, going back to 80. And so, um, yeah, tough love, tough, tough love is what's going on up there. Unfortunately, the people and the fans are the ones that always get hurt, you know, in tough love. It's just like a divorce, you know, the kids always get hurt. When a mother and a oh, father yeah. divorce, you know. That's what Gorilla said about it on the news, though. Yeah, yeah, Gorilla knows, Gorilla knows. Yeah, it, it's it's hurtful, but... Anyways, uh, what do you think about the Raider head and being friends with Stoner, dude? Oh, Stone, that's my guy, man. That's my buddy, man. Me and Stone, we're Starsky and Hutch. We've been, uh, we've been together since, you know, like I said, 2002. And um, we rebooted our show last year, Raider Fan Radio, uh, after a little hiatus for a few years. And some people thought they could steal our name and become <laughs> us, but they can't become us because you ain't us because we're the original. Uh, Raiderhead, great band. That concept of doing reworked classic rock music and funk music and what have you to, uh, to a Raider theme, you know, uh, South Oakland and, you know, I hate the 49ers. <laughs> <laughs> child and all that uh just a you know stone's a great musician he's also a great visionary great guy that has a a lot of ideas uh when it comes to how to arrange music and how to put together a show and that concept of raiderhead is just one in a long list of great concepts he's come with it's successful and we want people to get out there and support it here in las vegas too he's rebooted the band uh they've done two shows live so far in their return here at the rockstar bar las vegas Oh yeah, Boulevard, and uh, yeah, you know Stones, uh, Stones the man, man. He knows what he's doing. Raiderhead, support Raiderhead. Viva Las Vegas. Vegas. I mean Raiders. My my mistake. Yeah, Viva Las, Las Raiders. Raiders. Their new single. Yeah. Oh, awesome, awesome. And uh, besides that, in Las Vegas, what do you decided to? Why you decided to open up your restaurant called the Raider Raw Vegas Street Grill? Well, you know. I started out in the hospitality business. I've been in the hospitality food service 
this industry for 35 years. I know, you know, backwards and forwards, up and around. And it's been a dream that I wanted to do. Uh, the concept came together in Oakland many years ago. Uh, and it was going to be tied in with the black hole. You know, me and Rob talked about a joint venture at the time and, and what have you. Um, but the bottom line is, uh, when it was time for me to transition and leave Oakland, um, I bought the concept with me, of course. And uh, when it comes to just, you know, business opportunity, particularly for small business, Vegas is much more um, in favor and favors small business. And so we're going to get it started here. And the concept is, uh, you know, the Raiders trying to bring a vibe and an energy that's somewhat similar to what you grew up in at the tailgates out there in the North D-Lot and what we established with the Black Hole and the Wiz Zone and South Shield and, you know, La Raza, Black Sunday, the Hell's Kitchen, just that whole blitz chick in the living room. <laughs> All that combined together uh, will be the concept of the restaurant. And then we just want it to be a comfortable vibe for Raider fans to come to uh, when they come out of town patronize the place and uh you know we hope to have a comedy night too and uh, it's just going to be you know a place that's truly a raider hangout you know a hanger a raider hangout we're going to have some of the same food that people are accustomed to with the tailgates the famous tri-tip skirt steak uh tortilla <laughs> uh, um and what have you and uh you know chicken of course and just everything you know grilled okay. food and uh grilled fun as i like to say you know so just grill baby Raider Rob's Vegas Street Grill. It'll be coming soon. Awesome! Can't wait for that. And uh, it's kind of it's kind of yes, look is it is it's kind of look like similar to like Ricky's, right? Oh yes. I mean, you know, anything that any of us will do in the food industry when it comes to a Raider fan uh, is going to have uh, its inspiration from Ricky's Sports Theater and Grill. And God bless and rest Ricky Ricardo. Hello, Tina. Oh yeah. God bless Tina Ricardo. Um, you know, yes, Ricky's was definitely the premier mecca for the Raider Nation for many, many, many years. I used to go to Ricky's when the team was in Los Angeles. I'd stop in there and watch a game sometime during the time they were gone to Los Angeles. And so, um, yeah, it's going to have that Ricky's feel. You're exactly right, Art. We want to bring that type of same atmosphere, that same type of welcoming, opening mat uh, to Raider fans and what have you. And make it a place where Raider fans, when they're there, can turn it into and give it give it its vibe and energy and make it what they want to be and I'll take from that you know what I'm saying and you know we'll have Raiderhead playing there the live music but uh, yeah you're very you're very right Art it, it will be uh, very much modeled after Ricky Sports Theater and Grill yeah oh definitely definitely and speaking of that over in Central uh, I mean Castro Valley what do you think like the Vallis locker room and being a relationship with John Vela well John Vela great Raider, of course, and a man that I've known for many years, and I thank him uh, so much for giving me opportunities uh, to interview him and being on our show when we were establishing uh, Raider Talk Raw with Mort, and also he came on Raider Fan Radio, too, and uh, been a great friend and, and owned his stores downtown in Milpitas and Fremont and Castro Valley. Um, you know, again, that was some politics and some business uh situation with the Raiders. Uh, as a matter of fact, you spoke about that on our show. We'll be playing that interview on our website once it's up. It'll be available to hear that classic interview with John Villa when he explained all the drama and business drama that went on with that situation. But um, it was a great brand, great store. And again, John Villa, our Toms had a store. Willie Brown owned a liquor store for a couple of liquor stores in Oakland for many years. One of my neighborhood that we used to go to. Uh, I spoke earlier about Clem Daniels owning the end zone, the Raiders spirit is entrepreneurial. You know, what we're doing now, whether it's us with our show or what you're doing with your show, and uh, what Rob was doing with the Black Hole, with promoting other costume fans and the fans of the Raider Nation, um, we have an entrepreneurial spirit. That all stems from Al Davis and how he made this little team over in Oakland uh, on the East Bay of uh, the San Francisco Bay Area, this big business entity. You know, people forget that from 1982 almost into uh, the early 2000s, the Raiders were the top merchandise-selling team in professional sports. You know, we led the NFL particularly in merchandise sales, you know, for many years, you know. And so this is why you see a lot of teams now over the last 20 years try to cop the black and bring black into their color scheme. Teams like the Jets, who ain't never had no damn black in their color scheme. Um, <laughs> you know, teams like the Redskins, never had black in their color scheme. The Patriots, never had black. You can see black Patriot hats now. <laughs> so the influence of the Raider team and its legacy and the image of the fans that, like you said, really took uh, on its shape in 1984, 
merchandising and what have you too. But and, you know, both of those coupled together uh, helped influence. You know, and this is why I say we changed the fan culture because we helped influence the marketability of fans through our entrepreneurship. You know, through the black hole being an established business, we weren't just fans dressed up screaming in Section 105 making noise every Sunday. That was a business. Black Hole was an LLC and still is. It's a business. Um, you know, Way to Rob, Violator, Gorilla Rilla, um, the Blitz Brothers with Spike and Howie, all of us incorporated ourselves and became figures that did appearances, uh, parties, uh, commercials, some of those guys did, TV appearances, all that. So um, that was the business spirit that we all, I think, inherited from the model that Al Davis set. And so, uh, you know, yeah, John Vella was just another one in that long list. And I hope, you know, uh, Mr. Vella's doing well. And, uh, yeah, everyone should take a cue from that, you know, that uh, the, Va- the Raider Nation is uh, very marketable. You know, the NFL makes a lot of money off of us. You know, why shouldn't we make money off ourselves? No, I get the point. Yeah, I mean, it is business. I mean, like, making money is something similar just to get the business license and then stuff. Yeah, you know, all of that. All that plays a role um, in establishing a business. But the business of being a Raider fan, um, like I said, the Black Hole, you know, Black Hole Rob and Dave and Monzo, the late, great Dave Monzo, um, you know, which you've seen, like I said, with the individual fans and particularly now Gorilla Rilla, who's just, you know, an international superstar as a fan. Um, You know, this is not something that we go into thinking about doing. It's just that that spirit from the Oakland Bay Area of the city of hustle and understanding how to promote yourself. uh, We naturally just have that from that region of the country. We just are that way in the Oakland Bay Area. You're that same way. Your mom became a very prominent photographer. You know what I'm saying? During the time that the Raiders were in Oakland. You know, we just have that spirit to get out and hustle what we know our worth is when we see that we uh, have something that people like, you know, when people are uh, are drawn to. So, you know, don't fault us for that. But uh, we're the ones that established that. You know, we established that identity and that ideology. And now, you know, it's everywhere. You know, it's everywhere. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it is, it is everywhere. So, uh, anyways, let, let's talk about the Raiders, man. What do you think about this season? I know we win, like, the three uh, games over at the, you know, Dolphins, Ravens, and uh, Steelers. That That's crazy. Uh, you know, what I like about this team, Art, is that there's no quit in this team. And not that previous teams were quitters, although Randy Moss was a quitter, and so was Warren Sapp. That's way back. But anyway, that's a personal dig at those two. I didn't like them. But anyway, um... This team over the last couple of years has had a tendency, of course, to fold in the fourth quarter, uh, to fold in the second half. And like I said, I don't think it's quitting. It's just that you didn't have the right motivation, you know, and that's the thing that we have now. We have a motivating defensive coordinator in Gus Bradley, although I wish he would blitz more. Uh, the team is getting an identity through these three games that had kind of been lacking since Jack Del Rio's first year, which was an identity of a team uh, that's going to fight a team that's scrappy, a team that will take chances. And I love that. I love that we've won two games on late second bomb passes. That's the Raider way. You know, don't quit. Uh, attack. Don't stop attacking. You know, and um, I really love what uh, Derek Carr is doing. As much as I've been a critic of Derek Carr's, I love that he's getting his stock up, number one, uh, and making a claim for being in the top ten as quarterbacks because he's been getting all – the pats on the back like he's a top 10 quarterback, but we haven't necessarily gotten the returns. Through these last three games, we have seen the returns. He is definitely uh, playing like a top 10 level quarterback. Uh, like you said, the offense with Jacobs comes back and running back, uh, spreading the ball around to our tight ends, Waller and Carrier and Moreau. Ruggs now, hopefully we can get him down the field more and get the game more vertical. Renfro is just, you know, we call him slot machine out here. I call him slot machine. You know, and... Uh, <laughs> Because he's just in that slot, man, down that seam, making brilliant catches and timely catches. Reminds you of Freddie Belitnikoff for Todd Christensen. You know, guys you can always rely on underneath. And, uh, again, the defense, much improved, uh, vicious, physical, Max Crosby, who we call Sax Crosby. Um, you know, Phelan, number 96, the DT is showing up. Hankins is playing great. Jonathan Abram is, and, and Terrell, uh, Trayvon Mullen really supplanting that defensive backfield. And a guy to really watch out for, and this is why I'd like to see us do more blitzing, is Denzel Perryman, who was a blitz machine when he was at the University of Miami. And I know that's what the Chargers had drafted him for, hoping to pair him with Bosa and uh, be able to really bring an inside-outside blitz package. We can do that, too, with Max Crosby and with Denzel Perryman. So watch number 52, uh, Denzel Perryman. Uh, he's, he's a beast in the middle, you know, and uh, a great blitzer. And so, yeah, I'm, 
Okay. I think we get to the playoffs. Yeah. And I'll be looking for Max Crosby as well for the the defense one, and uh, especially Henry Ruggs for the offense. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, and so, uh, and before I let you go, man, any advice to the younger generations about the business, uh, being a Raider fan, or something that protects your brand that don't steal it from anybody? Yeah, you know, uh, all you young fans that are coming up, and as you have seen uh, the legacy that has been, excuse me, uh, the path that has been laid out by some of us older fans that you know um, uh, from our name and how we branded ourselves or whatever, Protect your image is number one. Whatever you create of yourself, make sure you protect it. Uh, if you create a show, a YouTube show, a, a radio show, a podcast, a blog, whatever it is, make sure you own it. Make sure you protect it and uh, have it copywritten. Make sure you have it trademarked. Make sure you have any image that you come up with or likeness that you have trademarked. But more importantly, uh, make sure you know the history of the Raiders. Go back and study the history going back to 1960. Uh, there are a number of books. Uh, just don't rely on the internet or, or, or Wikipedia. You know, go on Amazon and, you know, search books about the Raiders, you know, or the Oakland Raiders. And get those books and read and study about this history of the Raiders. And then, um, you know, there are DVDs, Raider Nation, a DVD, Raider Head Invasion, a candlestick. Uh, and there's some other ones that are out there that will uh, really help you identify with what it is to be a Raider fan. Understand our philosophy. Understand uh, that the Raider Nation is a country unto itself, as I've said for years. We're our own entity, separate from the other 31 teams. And you're special. You are well respected as much as you don't think so, because the first sign of people respecting you is they'll steal from you. They'll try to take from you. And as you can see, Spike and Hal, we violated these guys were the ones that pioneered the shoulder pads with the spikes and all that. Now you see Dolphin fans, Colt fans. The Colts are about a horse. So what are they doing with spikes? You know, Seahawks fans, all that. And that's why I mean, that's why I say know the history. So when you see these things out in the public, you know, hey, that's Raider. Or, you know, that's that's the black hole. These, these uh, end zones now, the red zone in Arizona, uh, the deep end in Miami, uh, the bird's nest, uh, the eagle's nest. These were all sections of stadiums that did not exist back when the black hole started and up until, like I said, the mid-2000s. So, you know, be mindful of that. Know that you are part of something that has set precedent in history that mainstream media is never going to give us our credit. Mainstream media is never going to acknowledge the influence we've had as a fan base on pro sports. But you know it. And if you know it, you can continue to grow it, you can continue to build it, and you continue to represent it. And it's all in the spirit of what we represent, the commitment to excellence, the pride and poise, and the greatness of the Raiders, which is always in its future. And uh, the bottom line with us is just win, baby. Win in life, win in whatever business you're doing, win with your family, win with your parenting, win with everything. That's the model a Raider fan carries with them. Just win, baby. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yes, just win, baby. That's the main word. Uh, now, uh, would you like to give the Raider fans about your email, or they can find you on social media or YouTube, where you can, uh, you know, where they can watch you? Best place to uh, catch us and catch me is Raider Fan Radio on YouTube, um, and pretty soon we'll have our website up, which is Raider Fan Radio. Uh, dot Vegas, and we'll give, be uh, giving that link to you, of course, on the Raider Art Show, so you can put that out to the people. And uh, yes, uh, what's the Facebook? They can hit us at the Facebook that Art has started up. Uh, what's it, Facebook? Dad, Facebook.com slash what Art? Raider Ra Fan Radio? Raider Fan Radio dot Vegas. I created that. Okay, uh, Art created that, and uh, we thank him. And you can also hit us on IG. Our IG account is really. Uh, blowing up right now. Just had 35 new Raider fans join us uh, last night, so we appreciate that growth that we're having on our IG account. And so hit us there at Raider Fan Radio on IG. I guess it's at Raider Fan Radio, however that works. Uh, but anyway, we're down here in Vegas doing good in the desert, man, and uh, trying to keep it alive, keep the fire burning, and the torch uh, for the Raiders burns brightest and forever uh, in the Raider Nation, all of you out there. So, uh, yeah, that's where we at, man. That's what we're doing, Art. Oh, yeah, for Al Davis as well. Yes, sir. Al Davis, man, the king, King Al. He created the kingdom, and now we all are just 
making sure the kingdom grows, man. Oh, definitely, definitely. It's almost going to be like the 10th anniversary of his death, actually. Yeah, it will be coming up um, this uh, October. Yeah, so uh, we'll definitely be doing something for that next month uh, to remember Al Davis. But uh, the great pioneer uh, and just a great football visionary, uh, again, a man who set standards with the Oakland Raiders that the NFL, you know, took and have used and incorporated and what have you in some of their teams how many years have resembled the old Oakland Raiders. Uh, but, of course, they always hated us, always tried to make us seem like we were the worst thing ever. But like I've said, you know, a lot of money has been made off the Oakland Raider brand and the Las Vegas Raider brand now. And so those of you that are fans out there, all I can say is in the true spirit of Oakland, get yours too, okay? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, would you uh, give a shout-out to uh, Raider Nation or uh, give a go Raiders to anybody you know? Awesome. Thank you, man. Have a great day. I uh, hope you have a great day for your uh, restaurant and your show, though. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate it, man. I wish you great success on the Raider Art Show. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a great day. All right. You too. Bye. All right, Raider Nation. That was Raider Rob. Man, that, like he said, the stock up. I forgot that word, you know, for the uh, place. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. He'll do something special for the uh, Las Vegas, and especially the Raider Las Vegas Street Grill. So I can't wait for that. You know, he'll they'll be opening up the uh, we, uh, website as well for the uh, Raider Fan Radio Vegas. So I'll put a link down below uh, to check it out. So now uh, the other caller for the Raider conversation, this man, another one, a legendary from Oakland, uh, Raider Man, the man behind the Raider Oath from Raiderhead albums. And I'm so glad and thankful for having him on my show. And let's go ahead and get get into the call next for Raider Man. See what's up. All right, Raider Nation. Here he is, Akim Anderson, a.k.a. Raider Man. How are you doing today? Doing great, Art. How are you doing, Doc? Yeah, um, pretty amazing, you know, today. So uh, I know you got work, you know, later on uh, today around 4, so we might make it quickly. Um, now, before, now I noticed that you made a lot great for the calling on the radio show, doing the Raider Oath, and being part of the Black Hole. But before all of that, let's find out how you became a Raider fan. Ooh, you're going back to the beginning. Uh, well, I, you know, to be honest, you know, people say it, it's kind of become cliche, but I, I really believe I was born a Raider fan. I've always been different. Uh, when I was really, really young, my first, well, I just start from the beginning. I was born January 1st of 1973. So just so happens that our, you know, first Super Bowl was 76. Now, I wasn't completely coherent of the Super Bowl in itself. But I was like really, really attracted to that silver and black. And it just was something about those games that I wanted to be around. So my brothers would tease me about it. And one of them was a Dallas Cowboy fan and the other one was a freaking Weiner fan. And so, you know, it was a long history of kind of going through that kind of stuff. I don't know, it was kind of like early hatred. And I, I thrive off of it. So maybe it's just me naturally. Oh, that's pretty amazing. You know, like some of your cousins, yeah, I just couldn't even believe the Cowboys and Niners fan. You know, we can't even stand it in those ways. <laughs> my, God rest his soul, my dad was a freaking Weiner fan. You know what I'm talking about? Was <laughs> <of> anger. <laughs> I had serious problems as a kid, but I fought through it. We're here now. It's not bad news anymore. Yeah, definitely, definitely. All right, so um, who are some of your favorite legendary players or the current ones today? My favorites all the time. I mean, I think my very first favorite, uh, and it's a trip because I think the, my first coherence of, of a player was because of this old clothing line. Uh, it's like, a, uh, I can't remember the name of it was, but Ben Davidson always stuck out to me. And so it's like, you know, Big Ben kind of made an impression. Uh, I love, you know, John Matuzak. My favorite uh, I guess when I kind of became conscious of the game, when I knew what I was looking at, when I knew what to say and talk about, was Lester Hayes. 
Uh, that was the guy who, I don't know, I've always been kind of a defensive-oriented guy, and it was just something special about him. You know, he just kind of had that thing where he made you want to play, he made you want to make you put your nose in it. And, you know, I appreciated his quality early, some of the adversity that he dealt with, with, you know, like a speech impediment and how he was man enough to walk through that fire and, you know, and just uphold himself, you know, become that true professional and that real football player that he was. And, you know, he should be in the Hall of Fame, man. So, yep. yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think maybe some of the people will might get Lester Ace into the uh, Hall of Fame in some in somehow some way. So, um. yeah, all we can do is hope. I mean, you know, there's time, but you know, gratefully he's still here, and you know, we get a chance to just you know dig on life right now. So there's so many of them in line. You know, we never know what the NFL is going to do, let alone the Hall of Fame. So we just you know we keep them close to us in heart and appreciate them. You know, the way we're supposed to as fanatics. Yeah, definitely, definitely. All right, now, um, how did you get involved in this uh, radio show that you have a passion about? Ooh, I got involved because, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Raider Rob, you know, we, we both know Raider Rob, but for the world who may not know him, uh, Raider Rob, the, the founder, the creator of, you know, what's really truly Raider Nation, um, he... He literally kind of recruited me. Uh, you know, I was walking around the parking lot uh, with a guy named Tim Del Rosario. Tim Del Rosario uh, started a uh, Raider fan kind of publication, his own little deal. Raider uh, fan magazine? Raider fan magazine. Yeah, yeah, Raider fan magazine. And I met him by happenstance. I just saw this young go-getter out in the parking lot. He's a little older than me, but, you know, I just saw the spirit on him. You know, just was this guy out in the parking lot, and he's just trying to impress people. Hey, you really want this magazine? And I don't know, for whatever reason, I had a little charisma, so people like to take the magazines from me. Um, so he gave me a bundle. I started passing them out with him. Long story short, he introduces me to this guy, Raider Rob. And Raider Rob... Uh, started to tell me about this endeavor that he was doing, like a nighttime show or whatever, kind of like overnight, midnight to two or something like that, whatever it was, uh, is JT the Brick Show. And, you know, hey, we can get Raw in here, you know, and get me some, some ideas or some pointers about, like, what he did. He kind of, you know, talked me through what he did and gave me uh, some, some examples. And then I kind of started to craft my own thing. You know, I got a, a bit of an original streak to me anyway, but he really encouraged me to be, you know, an originator, take on my own thing. You know, he met me as Raider Man, so he got something to work with and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I guess I got kind of good at it. So, you know, it started from there. And, uh, you know, I did my best to kind of hold it down in different times or maybe, <clears throat> you know, maybe Rob wasn't around, you know, or, you know, uh, the black hole might call me to do something special, you know, for, you know, TV or whatever. And they just some great opportunities to get involved. And uh, I, cher I treasure them all. I still, tre I still cherish them to this day. Oh, definitely. Like any TV or radio is maybe something special for you in many ways. I wish I could have been like been like that, you know, in certain ways. Yeah, you know, I, I feel lucky, you know, honestly, because I didn't plan on any of this. And, and these weren't my endeavors. I mean, you know, these were things that people were doing and these were their dreams. It was just like, you know, in my mind's eye, it's almost like somebody bring their baby over your house and ask you what you watch them for. And if I'm if I agree to watch that child, I'm gonna watch him with everything I got, and that's you know it's it's challenging, uh, I guess in a sense because of the person that I am. I, I literally care about everybody, um, and you know we see the way that this thing has grown. So it's uh you know all of it means a great deal to me, and you know I just respect all parties involved. And while we're thinking of this, I'm thinking about uh, Black Hole Rob, God rest his soul, because. You know, that was, that was a good friend of mine, too. Oh, definitely, definitely. Now, uh, what was your reaction of the team left uh, for, uh, to L.A. and then came back to Oakland when you started being involved in the members of the Black Hole? Oh, man. <laughs> I think, uh, ooh, for me, that was my first experience with redemption. Because, uh, I, 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 like I said, I was a Raider fan a long, long time as a kid. Um uh, Going back to the first question you asked me, you know, I, I actually had a, a, a uncle. Um, his name is uh, Emmett Rochelle. Uh, 
uh, he happened to be the x-ray tech for the Oakland Raiders. And uh, so, and, and my, my aunt, who's my blood auntie, who married him and made him my uncle, she worked at the higher regency across the freeway. And so, you know, they would always get the, the Raider ticket, I mean, the A's tickets and stuff like that. I fought my, my, my way into getting Raider games. And so when I started going to the Raider games, you know, all of a sudden they leave. Now, story turns dark, so, you know, kind of put your, your seatbelt on here. But yeah. I've been a Raider fan, like I said, since, you know, at least 77. I don't want to try to claim too much, but I was a kid and this was real for me. But I was such a hardcore fan at the time that I had respect in my household. My mom knew about this. My brothers, my cousin, like I said, we took bets and we fought each other for wins and losses and stuff like that. Long story short, uh, my mom was shot and killed two weeks before I turned nine years old. Now, the irony of this is my birthday is January 1st, and that would have been of 1982. Wow. The Raiders left, what, March 1982, somewhere around in there, April. So... That was really, really scarring for me. That was like a, a bit of an identity crisis because, you know, I was getting teased. All oh, your team is leaving and all this kind of stuff. And I I was experiencing denial. I just really didn't want to believe it. I was not having it. And the team left me. And it was crushing because, you know, here I am, this kid, and I've got no mom. You know, my team is gone. You see how I am about the team. It was young and buddy then, but I was that person as a, as a little one then. And so... When the Raiders came back, I mean, it's like everybody starts these whispers and all oh, they coming and I'm like, you know, oh my God, is this real? Is this real? And then when they actually yeah. came, and I still remember getting ready because, you know, it's just a big energy building and all this stuff. And, you know, for whatever reason, everybody grabbed them for these different, like, costumes and carrying out and whatever. And I actually dug myself out of the mask. I started the Raider Man was almost in a mask. Oh, and, my. Uh, September 3rd, 1995, you know, the Raiders came back and we played San Diego Chargers there in the Coliseum. And I was on top of the world, you know. I literally met, uh, I was out just hitting the parking lot, all corners of the parking lot. I just wanted to be a part of everything. And I think that's where it started. I just started stomping the yard, as we uh, like violated, call it that. I started stomping the yard. That's, that's just what I did. I couldn't help it. And uh, so it just, man, it, it meant everything to me. And so, you know, you're like being a part of it, <clears throat> to actually come in. Like I said, everybody met me as Raider Man. You know, my kid, my nickname as a kid growing up, I got one partner, he called me Raiders Garbone. Because no matter when you see me, I got Raiders Garbone. <laughs> wow. You know, the Little Raider and Raider Tiger. And so there's a bunch of anything was affiliated with Raiders. They called me that. But on my 18th birthday, uh, there's one of our partners, you know, Charlie Mack. I, you know, I don't know. I don't want to start giving hood shots, but we just all outside and just enjoying the fresh air, you know. And he said, you know, you ain't a kid no more. You know, you a man now. I guess you Raider man. And oh. it just stuck. It literally just stuck, you know. And if it wasn't for Raider Rob talking me into, like, coming on to the radio, then it just would have been a hood nickname. Because I'd have been called Raider Man regardless. But, you know, what Rob did for me was give me an opportunity to, uh, I don't know, in essence, kind of become who I was supposed to be. So, you know, it's like I'm grateful. I'm grateful for Raider Rob. I'm grateful for Black Hole Rob. Uh, I've missed Tim Del Rosario. I'm, I'm grateful for my friend. I hope he's okay. I, I haven't talked to him in so long. Uh, but he really needed to be a part of this. You know, it's like I really wish that we were all pinnacle parts of what's going on with the organization, you know, even in Vegas, because I hate, you know, that they had to leave us, but, you know, King Al is getting screwed here, and got to live somewhere, so, I oh. don't know, I'm just a fan. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Keen Al, you know, long live the life. And, you know, like many change the name of your nickname, like Raider Man. You know, some of my friends over at the D or A or D lot call me like Raider Art. And that's where I got the idea from, you know, around 2012. That's right. That's right. And you wear it well. You as well deserving of you, too. Because, you know, it's like, I don't know if everybody knows it, but, you know, you've been literally with us. It feels weird to say that because it made me feel like I'm getting old here. But, you know, <laughs> since a little kid, you know, like those pictures, I, I, I remember I always see that picture. I saw that at Rob's funeral, you and Rob and, and, and uh, <clears throat> excuse me, it's still tough to talk about Rob. But anyway, 
That's fine. You've been with us so long, you know, you've grown up, and now you, you're you literally a grown man, and you're making this Raider art persona work. And it's a beautiful thing, because I love it that you don't hide behind some kind of crazy mask and costume and all that. You put your own flair on it, you put your own touch on it, and you're making it real, man. I'm really, really proud of you. You're doing a great job, Art. And then you just... You, take it over the top with your your podcast and you know your speaking skills you know you weren't that verbal you know growing up you know so now that to see you out there and you know you're getting the interviews and you're making you know appearances and you know you're doing a really important work for this new raider nation because the people in vegas have no idea what they're inheriting um but Raider Nation is real. And for the people that are, I don't know, I like to call it selling it, for lack of a better term, the more the people that created it, I believe, should be involved. And so it's challenging for me because, you know, it's like I'm, I'm smack dab in the middle of it, but I'm not really involved in it at all. It's just that I care. And so it's, it's, it's challenging. But, you know, it's just much respect due to everybody that, that really, really told the line and, and made this thing come to fruition because I'm praying on a day I understand it. I'm praying on a day that we all get to celebrate it the way we deserve it. Oh, definitely, definitely. And speaking of that, what was your relationship with the late Black Hole Robert Vera? Ooh, I called him Punkin' Head. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that was my brother, you know. Uh, it, it's touchy uh, because there's so much that I know uh, and at the same time, there's so much that I don't know. Um, but if anybody out there that has a real heart about family, you know, uh, you love your siblings regardless. And, you know, that's how I feel about Rob. Uh, like I said, that times too. <laughs> feel that way about, you know, my, my I, I even call him my mentor, Rob, uh, Raider Rob. And I feel that way about my, my brother, Black Hole Rob. Uh, because, you know, it's like I was there in the beginning when, you know, everything was introduced. It was it was Raider Rob who kind of actually introduced me to Black Hole Rob. And I didn't find out until, like, literally when they started doing all these different tribute shows and all that stuff. We did the, the E60 uh, profile uh, sports thing. Rob called me for that. And I came, he wanted the, the Raider Oath. He always felt like the Raider Oath was, like, the, the stamp, the signature to, to tie, you know, the Black Hole and, you know, to Raider Nation. It was like the beacon call for the hour of Raider Nation because, you know, Black Hole was always like an exclusive group. And, you know, when, um, let's say, the tides changed, uh, then things got really, really, really confusing. And uh, me, I probably became the most, you know, disillusioned of them all because, you know, it's like you almost don't know what to do. But Black Hole Rob kept me in the loop. You know, what he did was, you know, anytime there was something big, because, you know, most people know, Raider, man, I, I wasn't around for a lot of different things. You know, life was happening. You know, for a lot of people to think back, Black Hole Rob, you know, I went through a personal situation in my life in 2000. It wasn't for any particular reason. I was just growing through, uh, as I, my dad used to call it, life on life terms. God rest his soul. My dad's gone, too. Um, but. I just so happened to bump into these life circumstances where I got rear-ended on the freeway on March 7th of 2000. Uh, it's the same year that, you know, Eric Turner passed away, God rest. Uh, lost another cousin to that dreaded, used to be the most dreaded disease, uh, AIDS. Uh, you know, it was early February for that. You know, I just had these different situations I was growing through. Ultimately, by the end of the year, uh, I actually lost a brother November 12th uh, my older brother uh, he was shot and killed and then on December 8th in a random act of violence I was shot in the chest um, and so I was growing through well I was probably still in a phase of my life where I was going through things I had so many different things coming at me that I wasn't wrapped up in Raider Nation I never stopped loving my team I never stopped loving the people but you know everybody not with you when you go home you gotta go home by yourself and I wasn't coming home to situations that were the easiest so it was challenging for me to stay involved Black Hole Rob made sure I stayed involved and uh, yeah 
Um, yeah, I mean, I, I feel the same way, too, for, like, Rob in many ways, like, um, care, you know, I care for everybody, you know, over at the, you know, every, around, like, the Oakland Coliseum that I've known for many years. Yeah, yeah, you, you make family out there, you know, that's, that's what it is for me. Yeah, so, um, and what, what was your relationship with, uh, Stoner Dude, and, you know, like you said, getting involved with the Raider, uh, Raider Fan Radio back in 2002? Yeah, meeting Stone, that was, that was also another connection through Raider Rob. Um, uh, you know, everybody's program started to grow. The notoriety of the Black Hole, uh, Raider Nation was gaining the name. We were actually on the air at nights battling, you know, SOBs. Uh, they had, you know, people had names at the time, you know, the, the White Wine Sippers and Sugar White Mics. And, you know, Rob can run down the litany of names a lot better than me. Uh, I told him I didn't even really know. I didn't care. I was kind of like a fledgling football player. He point him out, I knock him down. <laughs> I didn't oh, care. wow. You know, I was a tool. And I was comfortable with that because we were effective in our operation. You know, when he saw a, a need to shoot or he saw a reason to go, he let me know. And I did my best to be on point. And it worked. You know, we, we got to here. And all of that attention started coming into the parking lot. And it, it, ooh, the dynamics of, you know, some people get, you know, attention and some people get, you know, uh, appreciated, if you will. You know, it, it, it creates a really ugly dynamic when everything is close. And so, you know, it's like, it's tough to know which way to go. And, you know, for me, I, you know, I had to go get my thing together. So, you know, um, yeah. I don't know, man. It, it, it all get convoluted. It's really, really challenging even to know how to word it. But, you yeah. know, these relationships, man, getting together with Stone, he 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 was doing the Raider, uh, Raider Head Till I'm Dead uh, program with Mud. And uh, I, got, I don't remember everybody's name, but, you know, Rob said, hey, you know, I just hook you up with my guy, and, you know, he got some ideas, you know, maybe be interested, and, you know, we went over there, he actually took me to their house, and I got a chance to go to the to the, the Stoner Dude dungeon, and we went to the lab, man, and Stone, Stone, he, Rob and Stone, they, they're literally kind of low-level geniuses in my eye, you know, because they're innovators, you know, they're frontward thinkers, they're pioneers, and, you know, Black Hole Rob, in a lot of ways was the same, but, you know, in his own way. Yeah, you know, it wasn't like necessarily on the, the talented edge, like, you know, Stone's a big time musician, a hell of a drummer, and who knows what other talents he got in there. Most musicians are always multifaceted, but, you know, the diligence, the, 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 the fortitude, the, literally the integrity to be able to push through and make a dream happen, you know. Uh, Black Hole, I don't know, Raider Rob. Raider Rob is multifaceted and talented, you know, even to the to the, to the extent of performing. And I wanted to be a part of all that stuff. You know, and that's what I believe that I am on the inside. I believe that in some ways, I guess maybe like a natural performer, I got better skills than even they do. Or maybe they can't do some of the things that I can. And I always just wanted to be used. I always wanted to be a part. So Stone, you know, Rob, basically Rob, you know, Introduced me to Stone, and Stone was doing his deal over in the South Shield. I believe that's back when we had a bunch of different tailgates. You know, we had uh, Green Eye Greg and Hell's Kitchen, and over and this was all just a uh, D lot where we are. But then you had over there in uh, in a uh, C lot, you had like um, Hell, uh, what you call it, the uh, uh, ship. I'm sorry, sorry about that. Um, South Shield. Yeah. And uh, you know, different tailgates like that. It just was tailgates everywhere, and so you know, it was to me. The mindset became find a way to bring it all together. You know, um, in, in history, you don't normally see the quote unquote South reaching out to the North to collaborate. And that's what was happening. I was being asked to come along and build something that was way bigger than I could have ever thought, you know, or even really kind of coming to fruition. I really didn't even have any concept of it, but I was all in. And, you know, I was honored because I wrote it. You know, it was words that came from my heart. Stone produced it. And, you know, it's like when he was putting it together, it was almost like, a, I don't know who, how many people out there have seen the Hustle and Flow movie. But it was kind of like that. I just kind of spit it out a cappella on the microphone. And then they kicked me out of the room to take a walk while Stone then went to work. 
And we came back and we was all staring at each other like, what, what just happened? Oh, wow. And, and over the time, I mean, literally, I'm, I'm MIA. I'm doing life. I'm, I'm growing through what I needed to grow through to be able to be on this day and time with you. I, I don't even really have answers for all of it, but I've seen some pretty dark days. You know, I just don't believe in complaining, and I'm not about excuses. So, you know, I kind of keep to myself and some of that's detriment because I might need to be out doing more and whatever because that's what I want to do. That's what my heart says. But, you know, there's not a whole lot of people around that you can talk to that's been shot in the chest. There's no, you know, uh, there's no groups for me to go and talk to. <laughs> you know, oh, no worries. Yeah, no worries about your chest thing and your your tattoo on your chest, the 19. It's just pretty amazing, like the same great shape of you. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. God bless your heart. Yeah. I tell you, man, great shape is, man, you hit that one on the head. It's just tough to stay in any kind of shape. Because I got rear-ended on the freeway the same year I got shot. So it's like I, I jacked up my back. I got two bad, what you call them, uh, herniated discs in my back. And I got shot in the chest. And, you know, most people just say, get over it or, you know, forget about it or whatever. But, you know, it don't matter. You always feel this. I'm kind of like a walking and heel with a bad back. And I got to go look in the mirror. <laughs> you know, you don't get a chance to run from what I deal with on a daily basis. So I just don't make excuses. It, you know, it all culminates to who I am, you know, as a person. And the way I look, to look at it is I'm intent on using my superpowers for good. You know, God called this mission. If he say go do it, go do it. I'm not that one from Allen Iverson, but I believe that with all my heart. Oh, definitely, definitely. All right, so uh, what kind of a, like, you, what kind of, like, a, a charity work for you do for the Black Hole or the Raider Nation? Ooh, oh, man. Well, in the beginning, uh, the, when the Black Hole, when we first started patching into doing, you know, charities and whatnot, I think our very first charity was Mother Rights Foundation. Because, um, you know, it's, there's so much, uh, like, homeless and impoverished um, people, you know. Uh, you know, it's, it's just a lot, and it's everywhere. It's every city, every town in America. And, you know, we were just doing our best to, to serve where we were, to do the best we could. And we found, I, I'm saying we, I would just really try to involve myself that much. But, you know, Rob and whoever else was coordinating the thing put together all these different vices to to be able to get out there and serve the community. And that's what I'm all about. You know, when I wasn't serving, you know, community in, in those ways and in, in the black hole per se, I was serving them when I was, you know, away from the black hole in church, uh, you know, in all those years that I was gone, I serve in all kind of capacities. It could be in my ready man, love the kids. <laughs> Stephanie would crack up. That, that, that's what we used to sing back in the parking lot. When uh, that dude made that song, that trick that love the kid, whoever his name was, we used to say, ready man, love the kids. You know, I was always coaching and, you know, spend time with the kids. And, you know, my heart is into that because it's probably because I always wanted that for myself. And I feel like I, uh, I guess I wish that I had other opportunities. And I always wish that, you know, if I ever had an opportunity to, to have something, then I know where to take it to to be able to give it. You know, unfortunately, nothing's really come my way, you know, as of yet. But, you know, I don't know what it means, but it is my goal, and I'm still here. So who knows? Maybe we'll be serving in Foundation of Fellowship someday soon. Oh, yeah, I mean, definitely, definitely. Now, um, what are your thoughts of the Keen Al Davis that passed away 10 years ago? Oh, heartbreaking. I mean, well, heartbreaking in that, I mean, because it was going to be a memorial anyway. I mean, my life is full of memorials. You know, lose my mom, lose my dad, lose my brothers, lose King Al, <laughs> you know. Uh, there's been a lot of that for me. And so, I, I don't know, I probably process uh, life and death differently than, than most. Uh, but I know I'm not alone. You know, affliction is as affliction does. You know, everybody go through what they had to go through. Um, but with this year... And, and this being his 10th year anniversary. And then, you know, we're going through this whole Gruden thing, and it's really, really a, an awkward time because it's, it's supposed to be, in my mind's eye, a life celebration. You know, we just buried Black Hole Rob and 
just had a wonderful life celebration for him. Uh, you know, it wasn't but a couple of years ago the Black Hole Day passed away and we're completely blindsided by that. You know, Ricky Ricardo passes away. It's like oh, all yeah. of our founders, everything that like really melded us together, all of the pillars of what everybody kind of loosely calls Raider Nation now and, you know, all these different things, you know. There, there was a, a backbone. All the, well, there are still pieces of that backbone left, and these things should be better appreciated. You know, they dropped this bombshell, and they, you know, they they almost like Watergate. They're doing a, a freaking investigation on the, the Washington football team. You know, I don't want to get your show in trouble calling them by their natural name. Oh, that's but, fine. <laughs> you know, it's just like you can't even talk anymore. But they go after a witch hunt that ultimately ruins the life of our head coach, John Gruden. Now, you know, he wasn't doing the greatest job and all that stuff. You can throw rocks at the mirror off, all kind of stuff. But just like what, you know, what Raider Rob and Steph and Stone talk about on our show, Raider Fan Radio, <clears throat> we got to cancel cancel culture because it's taking away the life flavor. Like, we, we don't even get a chance to, to celebrate our, well, I don't know, I'm going to call it loosely our king. Because I believed in King Al. You know, Al Davis gave me a reason to be this knucklehead that I am about this team. And being that knucklehead about this team garnered all these different relationships and these friendships and this family that we have now together. And we built this fan base to be something that we can, like, truly been a pinnacle celebration time. But rather than that, they rather push their politics. And not only take away our opportunity to celebrate, but literally take away one of our leaders in the process. You know, potentially just cripple our team at the beginning of the season. That's unprecedented in history. I mean, just like our team suffers like no other. But I'm proud of us because I refuse to feel sorry for me. And I'm not going to feel sorry for us in the process because King Al will be pissed right now. And he'd be ready to get out there on that field and go kick somebody's ass. And I'm hoping to God that the people behind the walls of that building feel the same. That somehow, some way, even though they found a way to detach themselves from us so that we can't get to them, so that we're not the same whispers in their ear, so that we can't be the same influence. And you got to, you know, have mediators now to let us in the gates and let us close to our people like we, you know, zoo animals and we need to be under control. I see. And the flavor, the, the real origin of the team is dying, like dinosaurs going extinct. And I pray that people, somebody, somewhere is truly paying attention to that because this is a beautiful thing and it should be better appreciated. And King Al deserved a hell of a lot better. And while that's all we've been doing is trying to give it to him. Yeah, that's the... People are trying to control us. That's an important thing because, you know, Al did this for everything. Like, every people with diversity, hiring Amy Trask, you know, like what he does for the fans, cares about the fans, just like Rob said. It's just amazing thing just in, you know, understanding those kind of a history that, you know, any Raider fans can not really, like, forget. Well, yeah, and there's also the, the, the nature, the true nature of that, the essence of that is that he wasn't doing it for publicity. You know, there's you know when you're doing something first, generally you're just doing that because that's in the best interest of whatever it is that you're doing. That man loved nothing beyond the Raiders. The Raiders was him, you know, and to know that there was no boundaries on who would be the best possible candidate to run this particular position. You know, you see it in the way that we may look at what Raider Rob has created. You know, we're Raider Fan Radio and, you know, ultimately growing to the podcast and the Raider, Set, Raider Fan, Raider Vegas and all the rest of this stuff. But look how long the beautiful Black Hole Steph has been a part. Look at her integral, you know, uh, position in that thing. You know, it's like that show ain't the same without her. It's just no different than the, the team back when Amy was in, involved. And we, everybody had a bout, you know, because we've had our bouts, you know, and even with Amy. You know, because everybody can't have their way all the time. But to know that what you're dealing with is organic. That woman was in a place because she deserved to be in that place. You know, it's just the way that it's supposed to be. And that's what we're used to. We're used to, you know, people getting what they deserve. 
You know, if you're a special player, just like King Al always said, you don't treat people the, the, the way you, you know, uh, I can't remember how you say, treat them the way you want to treat them or treat them the way you feel like they should be treated. You treat them the way they want to be treated. Oh. And that's what we build our culture on. We build our culture on treating each other the way that we want to be treated. That's why we're all special to each other. We take time for each other. We love each other. We care on each other. Businesses, unfortunately, change that. Business and politics. And unfortunately, we wrestle with a lot of that with, you know, with this new age Raider Nation and all the stuff that people out there doing to try to, you know, bring attention to themselves, not to squash people's ingenuity and, you know, impromptu spirit. And that's what makes Raider Nation, too. But the lack of reverence for history, the lack of appreciation for the origination, the lack of integrity. You know, especially, and for me, it's things because a lot of people claim to be, like, believers and, you know, and believe on their true faith. And yet they don't choose to use that superpower to, exo- to, to accentuate the truth in our situation to make our family better. You know, they really go with the mainstream media and just, you know, buck the nature and, in essence, watch us die. So, you know, for me, this time is a little scary because just like... They stomped on King Al celebration, and you know the world. Rob and Red Raider Rob taught me this a long time ago. He said, "People forget." I remember him like screaming this at me one day. He said, "People forget Raider Man," and I never believed that. I, I, I just to this day I still don't. I know people are selective in their in their 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 thinking, but people never forget. That's why they hold grudges. That's why some you know arguments never die. You know, it's just a matter of what do people want to remember. And I believe that, you know, you got to be, make people more want to remember than, than, than count on the fact that they tend to forget. And so, I don't know, it's hopeful, you know, optimist or whatever, not necessarily pessimist, but, you know, we got to keep fighting. And now more than ever, with our leaders literally dying, new leaders are always called to the forefront. And I'm doing my best to be here for my family, so... That's more my position now. We can't forget. It was hard losing out. And it's hard, you know, trying to think to celebrate him because we don't really know how to celebrate anymore. But we need to reestablish some ways. We got to fix it. And we can. We just got to want to. Yeah, definitely, definitely for Al Davis as well. Um, exactly. So uh, what, what was your relationship with J.G. the Brick? And you still be involved today with the Raider Nation Radio 920 AM. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to be honest, I you know I was introduced to JT through Raider Rob. <laughs> Again, another tether to Raider Rob. But you know, Raider Rob introduced me to JT. Uh, I was lucky enough to be in the midst of this great plan that we were all kind of putting together to to make this thing go. I remember in the very beginning, uh, Black Hole Rob used to have me go and like walk the parking lots with JT. <laughs> you know. I got actually, I don't know where it came from. I guess Rob had him, but, you know, some pictures came up of some of the things, and you know, there pictures of me walking around the parking lot and introducing JT to everybody, you know, because he came up from New York, you know. He got blessed to get an opportunity put on uh, one of that smack-off thing with the Jim Rohn show. I wasn't even really listening to the Jim Rohn show back then, you know. I, I just recently, over the last couple of years, with all this different fanfare, heard, you know, the call that won him the competition. So I didn't know any of this. I came in as green as green can be with no concept whatsoever. You know, Red Rob taught me everything. And so I started doing it in my mind's eye to make him proud. You know, it was almost like a big brother. You know, I didn't really have one that, that paid attention to me. And he did. So, you know, I wanted to make him proud. I'm still like that. And then, like what I said, when, you know, when he wasn't around, you know, whatever, when he, when he couldn't be there, then, you know, I leaned on black hole rob for that so you know it's like i almost kind of looked at him not necessarily the same because their relationships was completely different you know as much as i love black hole rob i love raider rob but i love him completely different you know uh you know black hole rob was i didn't consider him a mentor per se but you know raider rob absolutely do so, oh yeah definitely definitely oh, but when it's part of jt you know it's like um I don't necessarily have a, a super personal tie with JT. I, you know, I, I've known him for the years. You know, I got his number, he got mine. But, you know, I'm, you know he's not somebody that I call on the weekends or 
And like I called into the show to try to support his causes and stuff, but he's not somebody that, you know, that calls me. And so I don't, you know, I'm a grown man. <laughs> you know, relationships are reciprocal. You know, I reach out and I do little things or whatever, but if I don't feel like it's reciprocal, then, you know, you just got to take it for what it is. Yeah. I hope the best for him, though. I mean, like, I don't have no animus, you know, toward JT at all. I, you know, I like to consider him a friend, but friend to me, like I said, friendship is a reciprocal thing. You know, if, if I'm only calling you, then that's not friendship. So that's that's what I mean. I don't want to make it sound weird, but that's just the truth. I think anybody understand that. Oh, yeah, I, I understand about that situation. So, uh, anyways, uh, let's talk about the Raiders this year and what are your thoughts about the Derek Carr situation that, you know, people can't stand for Derek Carr? Well, I ride DC ass too, <laughs> you know, because there's a lot of truth in what a lot of people say. However, I'm the type that I don't, uh, the term I use is throw the baby out with the bathwater, you know. I, I'm a little more disappointed in DC over the last, call it, six years. Because in my mind's eye, you know, you, you've been called to be the number one guy. When you get called to be the quarterback, your circumstances don't matter. The fact that is all that there is left. And we drafted Khalil Mack as our number one draft pick. So to think that we would, you know, outstar superstar, to keep our second string quarterback, who, yeah, he had the potential to be the number one, but he didn't come out playing like that. And especially for all the history that he had, his brother, you know, being thrown to the wolves in Houston like that, that kid learned a hell of a lot, and he was on the forefront of all of that stuff. And I just expected him to be a lot better. I expected him to be a whole lot better season, and I ride my, my horse as hard. I mean, I'm hoping he stand up to the test. Now, over these years, you know, since Gruden, these last four years or whatever, three plus years when Gruden was there, all of the blame always went on Gruden. Gruden's play calling. And yeah, yeah, you know, Gruden's play calling. He got tendencies, whatever, he bullheaded, stubborn, he gonna do it his way with all that. But we always stay in contention because he is still just the head coach. Derek Carr is the quarterback. You the person that touched the ball every play. So go make plays. Everybody out there counting all these records and stuff. You got people arguing with each other. You know, they even call them like they call them. I think the car stands now and all this stuff that they got this social media. I don't particularly care about social media, but it's good to keep in touch. But everybody's got a valid point. So as we stand right now, Gruden has been completely removed from Derek Carr's system. Like no matter what. And I'm hoping that like behind scenes, He's still some kind of how half ass want to play to prove Gruden right. But what I've been suggesting all these years is all you can do is be taught. Take the playbook and go do your thing. And you've been waiting on somebody to tell me, is it okay? You trust me now and all the rest of that crap. Well, now he got to step out. Now it's time to be that quarterback that everybody been rooting for. I hear Red Rob saying it, you know, and that's nothing wrong. You know, Stoner do protect car, what, Homer protect car. He's our quarterback. Somebody got to protect him. Somebody got to root for the guy. He's our guy. He's a great guy. But when he walked across that line, I need him to be more like Stabler. Stabler say, they say you got to wear the black hat. I say wear the man, to wear the thing. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, stay and that's what it's all about. We, we got a role to play. You know, you're supposed to be the bad guy, and be the bad guy. You go back to being Mr. Christian off the field, but win. Damn the records, just win. Oh, yeah. Same thing for, like, Ken Stabler. Yeah, it, it, like, makes, like, common sense, you know, like, the comparison together as a quarterback. Well, that would be about impossible to do. Because, and I made this analogy on these radio shows. I, I was calling, I've been calling the radio, uh, the morning show, because my schedule is complete. I'm, I'm in school. I'm finishing up my last two courses. So I don't have time. I barely even have time to listen to, you know, like, JT show in the afternoon. I just kind of get my news from the morning show and go with it. But I said this before. Ken Stabler was, and him and Hal, you know, people don't know the relationships. I don't even know the relationships, but I know they wasn't buddy, buddy. <laughs> you know, there was a lot of times that, you know, King Howard was trying to upstage Stabler or trying to, you know, I'm looking for somebody to replace your ass. You know, we need more out of you. I'm put, He rode his horses hard. Maybe that's where I get it from. But then Stabler was one who, he stood in the pocket, if you will. He made whatever he had to do to make it work. 
That's why he called him the snake. Cause he worm his way out that damn hole. I'm not gonna stand back there and get crushed. He got hit enough. But be smart. You control the ball. Give him each plays. Get out the way. I'm gonna go out here and go win this game. Now he was setting records on accident, but winning on purpose. The dynamic changed with DC. Somewhere, somewhere along the line, the, the objective became to break the records on purpose. But don't worry about winning. And that's not King Al's philosophy. We just win, baby. 24-7, seven days a week, all day long, twice on Sundays. And it's like, for that dynamic to change, it creates a culture change. So now people are rooting for the person. They're rooting in rah rah in D.C. Yeah, they Derek Carr, Derek Carr. That's why they call them car stands, you know? <laughs> But if he was to go to another team, if you really love him that much, would you not still root for him? Do we have to be a Raider for you to be that much of a fan of him? Because he's not winning. Oh. So once he starts to win, the conversation will change for me. I'm not holding a personal vendetta against the dude. But I don't care about all your good accolades if you ain't worth no wins. That's pointless. I was always taught, you ain't wrong, don't argue. And never argue with ignorant people. <laughs> oh, it's never like that. It's never like that for Carr in many ways. So, uh, uh, for this question right here, why is why do you choose to pick number nineteen for your persona of Raider Man? Ooh, you know what? I feel like God gave me that number. Um, literally, uh, and, you know, that number is a firm part of my social security number. It's part of my identity, if you will. And it has been all my life. For whatever reason, I've, I've always been conscious of it, even as a kid. Like, Drawing little stuff with 19s in it. Uh, you've seen that latest design. I, uh, I, I designed that from being, well, the design I'm speaking, I'm trying to realize I'm talking on air. Um, there's the Superman crest, or the, the infamous Superman crest. And instead of having the S in the middle of it, I transposed and put the 19 in it. Now, that, that the, real, the reasoning for that, for me, was that I was always kind of a Superman fan. Um, but, you know, being a young brother, you know, you can only like Superman so much. You know, it can only be so realistic for you. You know, Superman wasn't really for me. But I appreciated Superman's qualities, and I believe that I am Superman in my own right. Okay. He just fly, he just fly better than me. <laughs> but oh, the definitely. Is, he, if you, they had these letter templates along the top of the classroom wall. You see the A, capital A, lowercase A, and then underneath it, it has what number. And those numbers correspond to the alphabet. There's only 26 alphabets. Ironically enough, 19 happens to be, or S happens to be the 19th letter of the alphabet. So I saw the S flipped over would be 19. So I decided I wanted to make a 19 crest for myself to identify Raider Man. Like Superman had the S to identify himself. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Like the 19 put it on the shield of the uh, Superman thing. That That's amazing. That's amazing. I appreciate that. Thank you, thank you. Now, uh, we'll let, what are your thoughts of your friend relationship with Wayne Mabry the Violator being inducted to the Fort Hall of Fans this year? Love it, love it, love it. Yeah, that brother, I call him Unc. We're not blood relatives. I appreciate and I respect the fact that he called me nephew. Uh, he, he, Well, I met him on my own, but I got to know him through Raider Rock. <laughs> because I've always been one. I, I was passionate about making sure that our, uh, at the time they were calling them costume fans, was represented. Because at the, at the time when I first started, you know, the big the big guy on the block was the guy who was wearing the Darth Vader mask. And you know, wow. he just standing there with a the little lifesaver and whatnot. And there's no hate, you know, he's doing his own thing. But I always wonder, how is he cheering for the team? Can nobody hear you? <laughs> you know? And so I when I first met Violet, when I was first introduced to him, you know, he accepted me all passionate, and I'm hollering and screaming. Oh, I probably had a few too many beers at me at the time. I'm telling him, look, man, you know, this costume can't be no costume. You know, if you put on a bunch of junk and you go to a place and you go sweep up every day, or you put on a janitor uniform and you go to work, you know, that's a uniform. That's not a costume. 
But if you put on that same uniform and you don't go to work and you go to a party, then it's a costume. Oh, so wow. If, you, if you're putting all that junk on and you go in there and go to work, it's officially a uniform. And that's what I did my best to encourage all of these new, what they want to call super fans. And I'm not taking shots at anybody, but I'm just saying, if you're wearing something to the game, only to be standing there and get like become a caricature. You know, you're just standing there and they're gonna take pictures of you and like, oh yeah, look at that guy just standing there. Well, you're not helping the team. So why are you doing it? <laughs> you know what I mean? Wow. Especially since you know that everybody around you is here for the for the work. We're here doing the job. And you, know, you work in the dump and you see somebody come show up in white. You know they didn't come to play. Oh no, no. You know like <laughs> you know I, I what I'm saying? Yeah, but like I, you know, I like I, I kind of related to him in many ways for my costume though. I, I, ne- like I've been hiding my identities in many ways, like Rilla and so many other people that I had known for many years, like with this persona of the costume, like any characters I come up with. Yeah, you do a great job. I mean, you know, because you almost kind of have to. People with a little different these days, so you know, I'm, I feel like I'm lucky because people just many people. I'm Raider Man is synonymous with I King. Everybody know who I am, um, but. My real friends call me both, you know. Um, if, if, if you're around, you know, the family, you probably hear I came a lot more than you hear Raider Man. It's because that's who I am. You know, it doesn't change. And that's really the way it's supposed to be out there. You know, people are putting on these airs and trying to, like, almost kind of want to believe into this. It's, it's clamor for the TV. I, I, like I said, I don't want to, like, throw it off on people because there's people that, that need it. Like the little Chucky, I love that. You know, let the kids get out there, get some some attention and some action and, and all that stuff. And all the adults who just want to indulge, do that. But get out there and do your job. You know, don't be wow. out there taking more pictures than the kids and all that kind of stuff, trying to make sure your brand is built. Let the kids have some fun. Let's pass it on. Let's... And what about the next generation? Of generation, uh, generation X right there. That's, that's what we're all about. So that's what it's supposed to be. And, you know, let's... The irony of it is, X is the, the, the variable that everybody uses just to throw off. But X is the most important variable because it's the one everybody remembers. And it's, um, I don't know, I, I'll say this, I'm just in the candid moment. I'm proud of people like Raider Rob and, and Black Hole Steph, you know, Stone. And I'm biased because I'm talking about my family. I'm talking about my people back then, you know, RaiderFan.com or God Vegas. But for keeping it on the one. You know, but for just staying grassroots, just being who you are, watching all the ties change around you, watch everybody running for the, all the stuff and doing the thing, because that's hard. It's hard as hell to be a standard, especially if people are not even really looking at the standard anymore. But that's kind of how America works. That's kind of how this place is. And so the diligence to just keep it on the one, that that's, that's more than commendable because it's going to come around. It's like bell bottoms. They're going to be fashionable once the cute women start wearing them. <laughs> I see. I see. Um, now, um, you have any plans to go back to Las Vegas or uh, anything that you're, you know, coming up with for the uh, events? Yes, yes. Um, and unfortunately, right now, they're not all tied into the team and the events like I would like them to be. Uh, especially since now, you know, God rest his soul, uh, Black Hole Rob is, is now deceased. You know, he was the one that called me to have me be involved and called me to have me do anything. You know, it seemed like everything is kind of doing its own thing now. But this project wasn't started about self. This is about the people. And, um, you know, I'm praying I get a chance to, to get in there and serve, you know, under the moniker that I've created and, uh, and bring a, you know, positive outcome for the family. Oh, definitely, yeah. I think, you know, I'm looking forward to that, too, you know, like next year or somewhere uh, in the future. Yeah, yeah. And I plan on coming out sooner than that. I mean, like, I, uh, as far as tickets, I, I only bought one ticket so far uh, for the last game because, uh, you know, I'm finishing up school, so I don't want to be running back and forth too much uh, trying to keep up with the team. I need to make sure I'm on top of my grades. Uh, but I do have a celebration, you know, scheduled for myself, Um you know, for my birthday, it's another birthday thing, so I'll be back out there for, I guess it's the January 9 game uh, against the Chargers, and uh, I'm hopefully, you know, hopefully get back, you know, a couple more times before that, whether I go to a game or not, maybe just 
come and hang out with the family. You know, if I just come all the way out there to watch the game in a damn bar somewhere. But, you know, I miss it. I almost kind of called it home. I'm looking forward to maybe getting myself a place and starting up some business and, you know, hooking up with my family again. Oh, definitely, definitely. Now, uh, like any advice to the younger generation or the current ones that, you know, protect your trademarks or any, like, persona they can give uh, to come up with the uh, original one? Yeah, yeah. Uh, be creative but realistic and honor tradition. You know, to honor tradition means you have to know it. It means you have to study it and you have to have a reference for it. You have to care for it. And I believe that that's an element that unfortunately is lost on a lot of this new generation's parents um, because there's too many in our, let's call it family. It's a vast family, big, 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 big family. But everybody's not on the same page and decidedly so. So many people want to be against the grain. So many people want to only do you know, like only go for themselves and i'm really hoping that this generation pays attention to that and has the heart care the, the, the intestinal fortitude to not contribute to, to that delinquency because it's time for that chain to break you know um, in order for us to have a humanity people got to value being human again and everybody only wants to become what i call these caricatures and it's hurting our brand um, people, you know, claiming Raider Nation and want to be barking out like, oh, well, this is what Raider Nation is and this is how you should be and this is what Raider Nation do and looking good like me. But they don't care about the people who even started Raider Nation. They don't care about anything that has to do with the real principles of Raider Nation. It's almost like they consider themselves having their own version of Raider Nation. And that's a horrible thing to pass down to kids. That's disillusionment, you know. In the household, mama shouldn't talk against daddy, and daddy shouldn't put mama down. You know, but we're in a generation where, you know, we got co-parenting, and everybody just doing their own thing. It's about making yourself feel good. And they're not realizing that that's what the kids are witnessing. They've been watching this for, like, 15 years. You know? They don't even pay homage to the women. Like, what about Lady Chains? Lady Chains, Blitz Chick. Yes. <laughs> you know? What about the ladies that were doing that thing first? But they had homage. They paid homage. They had honor for the for the craft. They, you know, they made their personas where they made noise, and they weren't just you know out there for the pictures and the clicks and retweets and you know look at me and you know it just it's it's a different vibe. But if the if the younger generation, whatever generation that is, so hopefully this message ten years from now resounds the same way. If the younger generation have a heart to pay homage. When the next generation comes along, hopefully that generation will have learned how to pay homage. Because they got to learn. They got to start from somewhere. Yeah. You know, these kids are being taught selfish, so they're selfish. We can't keep blaming the kids for that. Yeah. So... Yeah, that no. that's that's kind of a shame, you know, like being like that. But um, anyways, uh, before I let you go, uh, tell it like you like to give any Raider fans the social media or emails that they can hook you up. Yeah, why not? Why not? I can always use a few more push button followers and friends. <laughs> no, I like. I really do love being in contact with everybody. So as much as I scoff at the social media, it's probably just because I'm getting older, you know, get off my lawn type of thing. But I do appreciate it because I get so much encouragement, and it's just a lot of it is fortifying and inspiring. It's inspiring me to want to to get back out there and start doing things again, and you know, to really use this Raider Man thing because you know it is something. And it's time for me to start using that superpower, you know, for even better good. So if you want to contact me uh, on, uh, what do you call it, on, uh, I call it Facebook. Facebook. Oh, yeah. Uh, you can reach me at Akeem Henderson. That's A-K-I-M, last name Henderson, like Ricky. I used to swear up and down he was my uncle, but I was lying. I admit it. <laughs> I okay. And then on Twitter, uh, it's uh, at ManRaider19, I think, something like that. Uh, but again, you know, if you start typing in my name, you should probably find me. At least I hope so. Uh, and then I just started doing the Instagram 
and I got no idea. I think you probably just put in my name for that one too. But now I think I tried to link it. So if you get one, you get the other one. <laughs> no worries. I'm catching up, all right? I'm catching up, man. You had to sit me down and teach me some of this multimedia skills. You might have to be my multimedia guy. That'd be great. Really? No worries. I mean, I'm new for like I'm young over like early 20s. So I'll, I'll do anything for like the content of the Raider Nation and the black hole. That's right, and you do a great job, too. That's why I know you'd be the best man for the job. Yeah. So, uh, would you like to give me a Go Raider sound, or you can give me, like, a Raider Oaf when you leave? Oh, yeah, I'll do the Raider Oaf for you. Why not? We close him out with that. Oh, yeah. So let's do it like we do it in the jungle. Remember back when you were in the parking lot? You got to put your hand up in the air, tight ball fist. You got to look somebody across from you, look at your neighbors in the eyes. That's how we do it in the huddle, because you got to know which one of your teammates is ready to go to war with you, right? And you just say it to them. We've been battered and bruised. And we've moved and come back. But our colors don't change. We're silver and black. And this commitment to excellence starts up every year. And no powers on earth will drown out this cheer. So I pledge allegiance to the flag of our mighty silver and black. And unto these colors for which we stand. Raider Nation under a groove with free speech and liberty. Remember the two. He who has ears, let him hear. I hereby declare I, I am a Raider, Raider fan. fan. Come on, all right, do it with me one more time. I, I am a Raider, Raider fan. fan. Yes, yes. Raider man, thank you. Raider man, thank you for coming into my show. Absolutely, man. You do a great job. Let's blow up the internet with this thing. Yeah. Good job. You can push it. Tell your mom, Kenny, I say hello. I love you, lady. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. You too, brother. Talk to you soon. Bye. All right, Raider Nation. That was Raider Man. Man, go check him out on social media. Uh, been contacting with people for a while. So, uh, yeah, hit him up. Uh, yeah, just uh, see what's up for him. So, uh, all right, and before I let you go, um, I want to do this uh, a special happy birthday to someone uh, for this uh, this month of the Halloween day. Uh, we have a birthday, two of them. Uh, the first one is uh, Metal Cindy. Uh, we have been friends for Metal Cindy for many years, around like since the early 2010s, and uh, she was the one that performs a band, a tribute band from Kiss that is called Kisser Tribute. Um, there are just a couple of females, the, the version of it, were out and performing some of the tribute and stuff for that, and, uh, one of the, um, uh, Kiss songs that I, I did not get to know of, but, um, yeah, like, heavy metal, their style of their guitar, um, the bass, and, uh, just like the, just like, uh, Metallica, yeah, it's, it's a really, a heavy metal band, what they done for like the tribute for kiss and uh Mel Sending is something like he she's all about passion for the uh Halloween as well. Um with the dark um skeleton, like the um like ghosts and something like that. She's been doing a lot of uh products, the uh, product stuff for the uh for all the Halloweens and uh, yeah and she she also been like besides that she's also been performing for the uh the other bands as well for the uh, clubs and stuff. So I just wanted to give a uh, shout outs to you and uh, happy birthday to you, Metal Cindy, if you're watching this. So um, yeah, I mean she she's doing something special for the uh, Raider Nation as well and uh, for everybody. You know, like she's been making a lot of posters and stuff. Go support her. She's on social media. Just type her in like Metal Cindy and uh, we'll see what's up. And hopefully she might be going to the Las Vegas if somehow some way for next year. Uh, the, the season ticket prices are going to be lower uh, for the uh, promise because it was like more higher up because people couldn't even afford that. So yeah, yeah, give a shout out to you, Mel Cindy. And also, uh, one of our friend, uh, the last one person uh, for the Halloween birthday uh, the day is uh, one of our friend, our f favorite friend for many years uh, back in Oakland days when I started is the Mark Acasio Gorilla Rilla. Um, you know, I, I, he, he's done a lot for the Raider Nation for many years. Uh, ever since when the team came back, uh, to Oakland, he had this kind of persona of the amazing costume that he was trying to develop. Um, this out of this, like with this uniform, this monkey costume that was from like $19 out of his uh, yard sale. And, uh, that's where he came from that persona for what he 
come up with that that kind of a great costume with the uh, cat in a hat hat on his uh, head and um and it was like it was like brand new to like anything like he's like nobody else in certain ways because uh he does a lot for a lot of work because i i don't really even talk to him that much i mean he is super busy in many ways because uh but him you know he he's done a lot for the uh, charity work for the kids and uh doing stuff for the raiders events raider nation and uh you know i'm i'm so glad for him you know he he still does what he does as of today over in las vegas um you know, I, w- I would not probably be where I'm at right now if it wasn't for him. I mean, I love that man so much. Even though when I first started, I started first meeting him, I think at the headquarters around 2006 uh, when I got started. Um, he was something like like something into me. I mean, he, he was really watching out for me a little bit in some ways. And uh, he knows my family as well. And uh, he, you know, he does he does a lot for me in, in many ways, like a, a t-shirt and uh uh, newspaper that we were on, uh, for that history of us, and, uh, yeah, and, and you just can't blame him down, you know, he's done a lot, he, he just tore his butt up, and a lot of work he does for, like, this kind of a community of the Raider Nation and the Black Hole, so, uh, yeah, really busy man, but I just wanted to give a happy birthday to him on the Halloween day, and, uh, you know, see what's up, you know, and that, that's, uh, he's keeping that alive for his, uh, character persona as well, so, uh, all right, so uh, that's all for today, uh, Raider Nation. Uh, happy Halloween, and uh, we'll see what's up for the uh, Thanksgiving and uh, next month, and we'll see what happens. So uh, we'll we'll do something special for the uh, Thanksgiving events for next month. So uh, and before I go, uh, make sure you hit the like and comment and subscribe below. Um, you can contact me. The call is two zero nine eight zero nine zero one nine five. Uh, leave a voicemail and then I'll share it to my next episode. So uh, you can also find me on uh, social media. It's uh, Facebook. It's at Radar Inc. Twitter. It's at Radar Inc. And Instagram is at Radar Inc. The same one, like the username. So uh, you can also check out my website right here. It's uh, www.radarinc.wixsite.com uh, uh, slash site. That's why. I, that's why I have to say it. But yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I'll be returning back as soon as possible. Uh, happy Halloween, like I said. Uh, take care of all of you Raider Nation out there for the uh, trick or treating and stuff. You know, since the pandemic is almost going away, hopefully next year it might be going away. So, uh, and we'll see what's next for the Raiders to do something best for this season. Uh, just try to win some of the great games. Great games is like a really hard though. So uh, uh, for the new coaches, I haven't even checked the coaches yet. The new ones, the head coach. So uh, we'll have to see what happens uh, for the uh, the Raiders. So uh, until then, Raider Nation, uh, peace and love and positivity. Uh, take care and stay safe and have a damn great one. Welcome to 209 Magazine, a magazine designed just for you, with compelling stories to help you get the most out of where you live. With every page turn, we showcase the flavors and trends of the 209, plus so much more. Find us at one of more than 500 locations, from Lodi to Merced, and everywhere in between. And visit 209magazine.com to read articles you may have missed, and to watch our weekly web series, Studio 209. 209 Magazine, we've got the 209 covered.